Welcome to the award-winning 99% Radio Network here in the Fishbowl, broadcasting you live from... Let's try this again. Go ahead. All right, let's uh, take two over here on uh, in the Fishbowl. Welcome to the 99%, the old award-winning 99% Radio Network here in the Fishbowl, broadcasting you live from Globe Live Park, the heart of the entertainment district in Arlington, Texas, man. Happy St. Patty's Day to all you party animals and short leprechaun-looking people out there. Drink those green beers and... (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be like the voice or the view or whatever it is and get kicked off the air, man. I can say what I want. Man, this show is brought to you by the V-Rock, the Veterans Resource and Outreach Center located at... 4210 Industrial Street in Rowlett, Texas. The V-Rock and Life Message have been dedicated to serving our veterans, their families, and the surrounding communities for over 20 years. They are a no-border agency, so that means wherever you live on this great planet, their services are available to you. Some of those services include food and clothing assistance, job readiness and placement, transition support, and medical claims, plus much, much more. Visit them on the web at www.lifemessage.com. Dot org backslash veteran or stop in and see him Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it is riding season, so Microdot Helmet, get yourself protected with a Microdot Helmet located at, you can get it at the headquarters at Scoot Dog Motorcycle Leather and Gear located at 480 Debbie Lane in Mansfield, Texas. Man, check out Mad Dog at Scoot Dog and he will fit you properly for your Microdot Helmet weighing less than then a bottle of water, and DOT approved, no biker should be without. One thing also that bikers should not be without is proper coverage. So check out, everybody has those little accidents, those mishaps on the road. If you do, be, be well protected by Law Tigers. Make sure that Law Tigers is part of your phone. This way, if God forbid anything does happen, you will make your first phone call to Law Tigers. Not to your insurance company, not to your mom, but to Law Tigers. Make sure you call them and let those professional attorneys be there for you and guide you through the process because it is very important to have a proper attorney who is well knowledgeable in motorcycle accidents to help you out. So once again, man, we have a great show going on today. A lot going on. Uh, Great guests and 12, man. Tell us what we got coming up. Really excited. We're going to be hearing from uh, Paul Tuttle Sr. uh, later on in the show talking to him about the the move how the move from uh orange county new york uh, down to uh the sunny state of florida yeah uh, what is, is it it's uh like the museum freedom. right I, I wonder if he i wonder if like when he crossed the straight line if he you know if he uh if he did the william wallace thing freedom hell yeah you know, man i can only imagine that but, but we're gonna we're gonna be talking to him about that uh get the latest updates on the uh, occ roadhouse uh grand opening and then uh uh, before we talk to Paul, we'll be talking to um, Doug Brown of the North Padre uh, uh, Cigar Club, talking about all things cigar smoking, uh, see what's going on down there with uh, with their group because, you know, most all of us like to smoke stick now and then. Hell yeah. And uh, I, I still don't see a humidor or any cigars here as a, he, as a, uh, a gift and or And he did have some advance swag. notice that this was coming. So, <laughs> We're going to have uh, to bust his balls yeah, once we, we yeah, get him on the line. Sure, for damn sure. I see, um, um, do you know that, that Mongo has two groupies now? Really? He has I, two. I know Victoria I, is one. Yeah, well, I've she, gone up 100% yeah. over the original <laughs> yeah. one that I had. So... Victoria is definitely has clearly number one. She's but, the number one group. Yeah, but of now uh, Megan Cruz Miller, I just saw her pop in there. Um, she's groupie number two. She is a Mongo groupie. She is a Mongo groupie. Wow. I was kind of shocked to learn that, but gift baskets for both my fans. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the accounting department send those over yeah. pronto, pronto. It, oh, it, well, that's good, man. It, His fan base about, is built up. That's two more people than we have. I know. And, and, <laughs> When, when you say the accounting department, you're referring to the loose change in our front pockets, Yes, right? well, not in our front pockets, in the uh, back <laughs> the of our couch. <laughs> in the back of our couch yeah. and, our, and our floorboards. Those are our accounting departments. Man, uh, you know, we've had an amazing week, you know, coming up to this show, and we have so much going on pushing forward. But first, I want to give a big shout-out for this weekend's uh, crawfish boil to the Nine Brothers. Man, they stepped up and they had such a successful crawfish boil to benefit Heroes Memorial Park Foundation. Um, 
at Brick Tavern, Brick House Tavern in uh, Saxe, Brick Tavern, yeah. Brick Tavern Brick in uh, Saxe. Man, I enjoyed that that whole time. We had so many brothers and sisters coming out. It looked like uh, I mean, we left early. We left around five thirty, and that place was still rocking. The Brick House Tavern, the Brick Tavern, Brick House, Brick. Ta- I got that song, Brick yeah, House, in, in my you know, Brick Tavern uh, over in Saxe. The 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 staff was amazing. You didn't even have to wait for a beer. I mean, and they were packed. They were three deep at the bar, and you know what? They never lost. They never lost control. Always were right on point. Nine brothers really stepped up. I mean, what do you think of the whole event? Man, it was it was a great. They always put on good events, but this one was great. Um, for those who don't know, they they were uh, the first of several clubs that committed to holding one fundraiser in 2021. Uh, to benefit the uh, Heroes Memorial Bridge Park Foundation, which is working towards uh, the, the the building of a 22-acre park uh, there uh, at the uh, west end of... Uh, you know, Heroes you just Memorial let Bridge something park. slip. You know that, right? Did that slip out? That slipped out. Hey, that's, uh, well, that's, we so that's could, a tease. You, you, you know, let, let, let's tease that because, you know, Chris Kazar has been working behind the scenes. Him and Karen Solomon with Blue Help have been working behind the scenes and really pushing forward on this uh, monumental. So let's just say there will be some stuff coming down the pike very soon, but I think it's appropriate for him to uh, to address it. Yeah. Um, it, it's. I got a briefing yesterday, and uh, I'm not going to spill the beans, but it's going to be it, – it, it will be so – there, there's so many elements to it because, you know, you have the, the actual um, walk – that helps to raise awareness. You have the other components, you know, the counts providing alternatives right. through counseling, training, and uh, peer support. And then you're going to throw the third element in there uh, into the park. And there's a lot of moving parts to it. Um, but suffice to say, on this past Saturday, the the nine brothers stepped up and they they threw a hell of a party. Um, I, I don't know what the results are. It'll be for them to uh, to announce it. I know they they had printed like a thousand tickets. Um, for the, the gun AR. raffle, and they had sold all of them yep, out. Yep. Uh, I know that the alcohol sales were booming. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, they ran out of hamburgers in the in the first, I think, couple of hours because yeah. I mean, that's how many people were there. It was an amazing event. I know going you know? in when I I went inside a couple times and it was like asshole to belly button. It was just packed in there. So you know, we had guns and hoses there too. They had yeah, the truck guns and hoses and, showed up. Yeah. Uh, had an impromptu uh, a riding demonstration by. Uh, um, one of the Garland Motors. Uh, he was amazing. Yeah, he, I couldn't believe he was doing that. Dude, stuff. he was amazing. He, and he had Smiley on the back yeah, too, man. She, yeah, it was, it was trippy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, he got he's got motorcycle skills, he's, bro. He's got motorcycle skills. He's got some. Well, he's got a lot of skills. That's for damn sure. But it was good fundraiser. Yep. And uh, on behalf, you know, we're a part of the foundation. So on behalf of the foundation, we want to say thank you to the uh, the nine brothers that again they were the first yeah. ones to uh, they had agreed to do it and they did it and. I think it'll be done. Uh, their effort will continue until July 4th when they actually raffle off um, the, the AR. AR. Yeah, so yeah. thank you, Nine Brothers. For those of you who don't know about uh, Heroes Memorial Bridge Park, located in uh, Rowlett, Texas, you know for the last three years we've been walking the bridge on the 22nd of every month uh, to raise awareness, and you're more than welcome to come out and join us. And it has taken off, and it's going to be uh, worldwide now because now they're going to start once the pandemic is uh, and the lockdowns are over in London. Uh, Spectre over in the UK has uh, agreed to now start walking one of the bridges um, in London, England. And, you know, w- w- this movement, this Walk the Bridge movement has, has definitely uh, grown. But with that, we are now... Um, putting together the first in the nation actually yeah the ne- first in the nation uh, a park to honor those who uh have taken their lives to uh suicide due to post-traumatic stress and you know we want to remember these uh our first responders on how they lived and not how they died yeah. you know the families of these first responders are usually um left out of all the memorial services they don't get they don't get the uh the inspectors' funerals or the large turnouts for the funerals, because a lot of departments across the nation, you know, try to hide the suicide fact. But 
Well, okay. Wait, am I, I got no, you're, oh, no, yeah, you're, okay. You're, I, 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 I wouldn't say. You know, you're giving me that. Uh, no, no. We're, bravo. You know, we got we got a break for a bagel commercial or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you know, I, I'm. Um, this is awesome. You know, and what's ha- what's happening is, you know, these families, like I said, are are left out um, to just pick up the pieces, which causes more stress. And we can never forget the way our heroes lived, and um, and not focus on the fact that the post-traumatic stress was enough for them and the painful enough for them to take their own lives. Uh, so September 25th of this year, um, Blue Help is going to be back in, um, in the state of Texas. We do have a new Blue Help state representative here in Texas um, who's going to be help coordinating everything. And we hope everybody, we're going to stay tuned for those, this big news and this big breaking uh, update on everything that's going to happen right here in Texas. This is an amazing um, step forward for all our first responders, all our, all our uh, veterans, and uh, their families. So this is going to be uh, huge. Oh, <clears throat> wait for the announcement. It's coming, and and you're right. It's going to be yeah the only only one in the world. It's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, so just like I said, big shout out to uh, Chris Kazar with the uh, V Rock with the Veterans Resource and Outreach Center, Karen Solomon of Blue Help, and all uh, her staff over in Massachusetts um, for really, really taking this effort uh, to the next level and um, getting all the behind the scenes work done. So kudos to you. I'm looking forward to the big announcement too because I don't know nothing about it. Oh yes, yep. you do. I told exciting. you already. I gave you the, you got the you got the whole damn inside uh, inside scoop. You know, we we keep, just can't we, remember what you had for breakfast this morning. Right, we kind of keep you this out of the morning loop I on had that. Oreo cookies. Yeah. <laughs> we keep you out of that because we know your fan base yeah. with all, with all your groupies that are you know and the paparazzi that's around you. We want to slip sync. We, 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 I know. <laughs> <laughs> we you know we 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 want. We, we want you to stay dedicated to your fans. You know, we'll take care of the the minor details. You just stay up front. <laughs> is that the guy that's hiding in the bushes out beside his house? I thought that was bear. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where you went with that. The paparazzi guy. Oh, the paparazzi. The paparazzi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying yeah. to sneak a peek or something. Oh yeah, they take pictures of him all the time. They pick. Did they you got, know that? Yeah, they. I have no idea. <laughs> Dude, I get my coffee in my underwear you know, in the morning. Um, <laughs> take a picture. I don't care. I know we got we got people calling in today. We got um we got some guests calling in, but uh, let's also talk about the high seas rally a little bit. Uh, unless you want to move on from that, can, can we wait? Sure, to do yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We, we can I, do I whatever wanna, you want. I want to mention because I, I know we got a lot of happy stuff to talk about. Um, this Saturday uh, at eleven o'clock, um, there is a funeral for uh, president of the Doom Striker uh, Dallas chapter, uh, uh, Mad Dog, uh, his father, Mister Pearson. Uh, our club had a, has a long time uh, relationship with Mr. Pearson and his family. We did the Home Depot um, we thing. We did the Home, the Home Depot, Depot thing renovation at, at their renovation at their house. Um, um, I have had Mr. Pearson on the back of my bike before. Uh, he's one of Rowlett's vets. He was recognized there. He's a Vietnam um, vet. He's cool. a he's a Vietnam combat Vietnam. veteran. He's yeah. a Marine Corps and Army veteran. Uh, really great story. Really great guy. Um, one time, Mongo and I went over there, and he he regaled us with uh and yeah i mean he's completely blind but he loved to play the piano and did it you know by uh feel and uh he regaled us with uh some gospel songs it was just it was a great it was a moment and i uh, had much respect for uh for mr pearson uh and his service to our yeah. country uh he raised some great kids uh shiner from southern dogs uh has put together uh a ride there'll be a bunch of us leaving um, the VFW 5076 in Garland uh, at Castle and Meridian. Uh, we'll meet there at 9.30 Saturday morning. Kickstand's up at 10 for the ride out to Shiloh Baptist Church in Terrell uh, for the funeral to show our respects not only to uh, Mad Dog but to uh, Mr. Pearson. I, for one, I've, I've talked to him for hours uh, over the course of the last few years, and uh, he, he'll definitely be missed. Yeah, that's a shame. Um, and thank you, uh, the Pearson family, for the dedicated support and service of your whole family. And, and man, that's just, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to uh, hear news like that. So, 
So bring that, bring the show down. That's really a, good. Well, <laughs> if, if he used the word regale one more time, then you know that he just learned it today because yes. he knows with new words he has to use them in a sentence three times, <laughs> and then it sticks in his head. Well, I counted twice. I'm still waiting. Yeah, I well, use regale twice. Three times. Three times. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got he's got one of those little Ziggy calendars with the word of the day <laughs> yeah. right. by his it? bed just now. He regaled Mongo and I, and then the next oh. sentence he regaled Mongo and I. Which is kind of cheating, using it twice in the same sentence. I mean, the same sentence twice, but hey. So, okay, I'll what word credit. would you have used? Oh, you could, dude, I am glad you're expanding your vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, at least he's using it in a proper format Correct. within a sentence. You know. <laughs> you, the, the freaking grammar Nazi over <laughs> here. <laughs> All right, so um, do you want to, you want to, you know, everybody's sending out these, today's St. Patrick's Day. We wish everybody a St. Patrick's Day. You did in your yep. opening. Um, we thought we would, uh, we would get a call from our very own leprechaun from, uh, from Dublin, Ireland, you know. Oh, yeah, the preacher. So, uh, you want to ring him up there, Duke? You know, it's all, you know, I heard, uh, you know, the preacher's bar over in uh, London was, uh, Dublin. Dublin was uh, open for business the other day, and I heard you and, um, and, uh, Sea Dog were partying with uh, the preacher over in his bar. Yeah, we and, took uh, a little world tour. Yeah, you took a little world tour. Yeah, we you know, <laughs> you got to remember the preacher's bar is always open to anybody. He's got a Facebook page. So hit him up, man, and you can have a couple of shots across the pond hey, with the preacher. You know what was cool is as soon as we rung him in, we, we, we hadn't started drinking the Irish whiskey yet. But as soon as we did, we, he came on and he had a glass right there. How many you had, preacher? Uh, seven or eight. Hey, well, when you're in when you're in when you're in lockdown, man, you, and you have your own bar in your house, you might as well just sit there and have some. Might as well libations. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was it was really cool. You know, uh, I don't know if uh, Dublin is still in as locked as bad as the UK is, but when we talked to Spectre the other day, that um, they are such in a pandemic shutdown that they are not even allowed to um, congregate with one or more people. Uh, w- it's it's a horrible uh, situation over in the UK, and I want to give a big shout out to Spectre and um, the Chaotic Angels over there because they just got written up in their community um, paper for being one of the LEMCs over there that even during this pandemic have fed 46,000, 46,000 homeless veterans that have been on the street in the UK. They go out every day um, on their motorcycles. And provide meals for those veterans that are out on living out on the street. So kudos to Spectre and the Chaotic Angels of the UK uh, for your continued um, mission on feeding our uh, homeless vets that um, should not be homeless. Yep. So you know? so uh, sideshow Mongo. Without further ado, we have our own Irishman live from Dublin, Ireland. Preacher, Sh- how's it going? Sharon Bigara. Don't you know? <laughs> Is he there? Can you hear Gion us? Lin. Gion Lin, brothers. What's going on, brother? Ah, uh, look, it's St. Patrick's Day. It's the, it's the day of the Irish. That's what a lot of people think. But realistically, it's not. It's about a man who walked through the lands and fields of Ireland and preaching the word of God to people. And telling them all about the goodness and the grace of God. That's what it's about. But we've taken it and we've used it to celebrate the Irishness that have travelled the world and the highways and byways of the world that we live in. And we, the Irish, have blessed people and did great work in great lands. So that's, that's part of it. And the other part is that St. Patrick brought the word of God to the common people. Um I've got a little Irish blessing here for you, right? Well, let me just ask you something real quick, preacher. Was the man who was walking through these fields, was he a vertically challenged green man? (laughs) (laughs) I just just want to, you know, I I, I get the whole four-leaf clover thing. I want to know where the whole leprechaun thing came in. Do we know that? Do you have the history on that? Well, be God, be gosh. And to us Irish, Irish very smart, smart and clever, and clever by all, all accounts. Account. Because, because we come from the land of the green and the fields and the winds and the rains. 
And it's such a poor country, we need the people to come to us, to walk the lands and the green fields in the rain. So we convinced them that there was little people living in the hills, and that if you follow the rainbow, there was a pot of gold. Should I, isn't that how clever we are, really, to convince the world to celebrate the Irishness of the leprechaun and everything green? That, that that's amazing. That's that's you know that's that's faith, you know something to bring people together and something that. So I never knew that story. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. I'm glad you knew it. <laughs> but I do appreciate that. Thank you very much, preacher. All all known somebody once said. All known complete rubbish and trash. But I know it. There you go. Now he looks much better when, than when I saw him last time, though. Does last, oh, time, do. last time he had he had like two or three glasses of whiskey in his hand. You know, we were discussing that preacher about preachers bar on Facebook uh, that people here in the United States can join you and be part of your celebration over in um, in Dublin and and share a shot and share a few drinks with you um, if they go onto your Facebook page. Correct. Yes, you know something, if people follow me on the Preachers Bar on Facebook, I'll often talk about different uh, whiskies that are young whiskies here in Ireland that um, we've got so many distilleries of undiscovered whiskies because a lot of people just drink the standard Genesis and stuff like that. But if you follow my page, you'll often get me there with the parties. When the lockdown is over, Preachers Bar hopes to bring back some live music and food and crack August Kyo. Uh, back into the preacher's bar so people can follow and listen in and um, ask questions. I'll try and answer any questions they've got on with me or if they're thinking of coming to Ireland and they need any information, if they follow me on the preacher's bar website on Facebook, I'll help them any way I can. Awesome, awesome. And, you know, I know you and Sea Dog uh, enjoyed your, your day at the, the preacher's bar. The, uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, you know it, that to me... And especially in a pandemic, especially in a lockdown, if you you know instead of doing these Zoom meetings with you know colleagues at work, go across the pond, man, and, and party with the preacher at his bar, man. I guarantee you that the world tour that Sea Dog and I took was a lot more fun than any Zoom meeting. You know, I, I when you called me and you, you know you guys you guys were like four whiskeys in, and you guys were just so happy that you they were so preacher. You got you made him him and Sea Dog so happy. I mean, they, he called me all giddy like a like a kid that he just got out of your bar. <laughs> so you made it a lot of fun for him. It's infectious, isn't it? Really, but I mean, listen. As I've said always and always along the, 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 this road that I joined on with you, this road when you first started off, it's all about doing something in love and kindness and making a difference in someone's life. And that, if that means you're sitting there, and, and myself and my wife say this all the time, you're sitting there and you think, something's happening, what could we do there? And there was a, a young guy's 21st birthday party last week, and uh, his father's in the club, and you know, you couldn't go, there was no celebrations at party, and we sat down and we said, let's write a card, let's put some money in, let's call down to the house, drop it into him and say happy birthday. We didn't go in, that's all we did, we had the masks on. But sometimes we think of doing things like that, and we don't do it because we let something get in the way. But we're firm believers that if you think it, and it's something nice and something good, just do it. As the great Mike ad always says, just do it. Well, speaking of just doing it... They say that on Pornhub, too, just to let you know. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. <laughs> just uh, since it's St. Patty's Day, if you wouldn't mind, we haven't had one from a while as we uh, as we uh, move on. Would you mind taking us out uh, with uh, yeah, Preacher's well, yeah. Prayer and, and uh, bless the biker brotherhood today on St. Patty's Day uh, for us? Yeah, well, look, yeah, well, here's, look here's, here's a little bit of game for you. Uh, Jin on Lin, which, which means God with us, which is what we all want. We all want God to be with us. As I said, Patrick's Day is celebrating the Irishness, but it's also St. Patrick. Patrick. Walk the fields of Ireland, spread the good world, word of God. So here's an Irish lesson that's well known in the country. 
May the road, May the road rise, up, rise to meet you. up to meet you. May the wind May the be wind always, be at, your always at your back. May the sun May the shine sun warm upon your, upon your face. And the rains, and the rains fall, fall softly upon, upon your, fields. your fields. Until we, Until meet, we again. meet again. May God, May God hold, you hold you in the hollow of his hand. His hand. Just pray, Lord, for everybody everybody that listens to this radio radio station station. and all the first responders responders and civilians and everybody that's involved. involved. That your hand, hand, that you'll hold them in your hand, hand, that you'll bless them, them. that you'll you'll see that they have a lovely lovely evening tonight tonight and celebrate the Irishness, but also remember remember that St. Patrick Patrick walked the land land to bring the good word of God, God. that you will just bless this radio station as you have done up to this moment in time, that more and more people tune in, and that you bless the lads and the people that have come on the station from when it first started. Let your hand be upon it. And let you hold him in the hand, God. Amen. 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 Thank you, preacher. From your mouth to God's ears on that one. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 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 Well, oh. is that a little, is it that we're with that statement saying hell yeah after from your mouth to God's ears? <laughs> hell yeah. That's kind of like hell uh, yeah. That's really not. Oh. <laughs> but hey, we'll, we'll, we'll work with it. Hey, God bless everybody in uh, Dublin. I hope uh, I hope the restrictions are starting to lighten up. I hope uh, the numbers are starting to drop and the vaccines are uh, helping some of the elderly and the sick out there. So God bless you guys and everybody and all the um, residents of Dublin. Absolutely, Absolutely. like Like yourselves. yourselves. Look, uh, 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 hopefully we all get out of this as soon as possible. possible. And hopefully someday I'll see you in Ireland and we'll share a whiskey and stuff like that. that. Um, Um, I sent on on, uh, something to 12 12 today. today. Um, 12, Um, if you go to his website, the guy is singing. That is a fantastic thing to share with your friends. And let everybody look in on that. Because this is what the Irish do. We couldn't have a parade. A guy got in a carriage with a horse drawn. Carriage, carriage and he played and music, played music going around the going streets around of the Dublin streets for Dublin two, hours, two hours and it was all and traditional, all music. traditional share music. Share with your, share your, with your patrons there, there and let them tune in and, in and enjoy a little bit of that bit of uh, to see, them, see when them when they're at home. I'll get that posted up on our page, Preacher. Yeah. Listen, that. have a great Listen, evening, have a lads, and I love you all, and you know I'm always here for you. Stay well. Stay well. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. You too, brothers. You too, and everyone that listens in. Happy Paddy's Day. Man, See, the, straight from the preacher's mouth in Dublin, Ireland. From the 99% radio network to all of our listeners, their very own Irish, real Irish blessing yeah, on yeah, St. Yeah, Patrick's yeah. Day. Yeah. You know, um, it's got it's got a, with all the restrictions and, and in place, it's got to really be hurting uh, a lot of the, the, the bars in Dublin, as this is probably one of the biggest days to have, and celebrations for them. So uh, I'm sure a lot of them are, you know, hurting. So keep everybody in uh, Ireland in your prayers for today, and uh, just from, just think of them. So, all, all right. right, where are we going from there now? So, uh, what 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 country are we hitting next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, South Padre, do uh, we want to take a quick commercial break and then uh, we'll come back with uh, Doug Brown? That'll that'll work for me. Does that work? Does that work with you, dude? All right. How about you, Mongo? Does that work with you? It's well within my schedule. Okay. Let's All head. right. <laughs> Let's go to commercial. Come on in and take a trip down memory lane in Garland, Texas at TLC on the Lake, located at 4881 Bass Pro Drive. Step in and enjoy our made from scratch meals. It'll make you feel like you're back in Grandma's kitchen. Our friendly staff is always ready to serve you and take care of your every need. Enjoy your meal on our outside deck while overlooking the beautiful views of Lake Ray Hubbard. If you're out with the family or hosting a corporate event, visit PLC on the lake. Or give us a call at 972-203-8512. Take a trip down memory lane in Garland, Texas at TLC on the Lake, located at 4881 Bass Pro Drive. Fifth Avenue Nutrition of Garland is a twist on your normal coffee or donut shop. Serving coffee, teas, shaved ice, and delicious ice cream shakes, pastries, and muffins, Fifth Avenue offers a wide variety of delicious drinking cocktails. 
ranging from specialty coffee, nitro brews, meal replacement ice cream shakes, to energy boosting fruit flavored teas. At Fifth Avenue, we proudly serve the Black Rifle Company brand coffee. At Fifth Avenue, we back our blue by offering free coffee to all uniform members of the service. Visit us at 414 West Avenue D, Garland, Texas, open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Hop in and see us. We have a bright idea to make you healthy, delicious, and fun. All right, welcome back to the award-winning 99% Radio Network here in the Fishbowl on this Making a Difference Wednesday. And a happy St. Paddy's Day to all our brothers and sisters and our first responders out there. Uh, hope is hope you guys are all safe, stay well, and uh, stay strong, and we're going to all get through this together, man. We are broadcasting live from Fishbowl Radio Network Studios here at Globe Life Park, the heart of the entertainment district in Arlington, Texas. Man, we just uh, had a... Great phone call and a great prayer from the preacher over in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, visit the preacher's bar on Facebook, and you too can be a part of the Dublin experience and preacher's Sean bar. So, yeah, I noticed uh, that uh, two back. of us are wearing the traditional green St. Patrick Day's outfit. Hey. Uh, what are you going to show me a tattoo? I have green. No. What is that? I have a green shirt on. Got to cover it up. I have, I have green boxers on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wearing, way to support. Hey, I am wearing a legitimate. Just, just because it says Irish shirt, whiskey, it's from Ireland. Fly this came from brother. preacher. No, you're not oh. flying. Would you buy that at a gift shop? <laughs> no, preacher <laughs> sent it to me. <laughs> hey, just a real quick word on uh, TLC on the lake. Um, Rocky came home last week from Florida for one night, and we stopped off at TLC on the way back home um, Thursday night. They're they're fully open. Their staff still wears masks, but the uh, the customers are allowed to come and go as they please. Uh, the service was spot on and fast. I mean, we both ordered steaks, and I mean, we had salad. And as soon as we were done with our salad, our steaks were delivered. Good time. Said hi to uh, Aaron, and uh, it's a uh, it's a great place to go. Great. I'm glad CTLC is back uh, and opened up 100 percent because you know, once again, uh, when we were down at 25 and 50 percent, you know, the these these businesses couldn't survive. It's and I don't know how they did survive. And they weathered this storm, um, but thank God for them that now, now that they can bring their businesses back, be a hundred percent. Most people probably don't know. We know uh, they took a huge hit during the the recent you know snowmageddon, in that they had pipes burst, they had the power go out, they lost their entire yeah, inventory their, of their food, freezers, went everything. Down. Wow! They had to so toss all their food. They had to toss everything, and they they served some nice steaks in there. So, you know, that was just another hit on top of everything else. So this getting back to uh, 100% capacity and, really helps and them out. Uh, taking care of people, um, you know, that want to go out and have a good time. Well, I sent, uh, I sent John and, uh, and Zach Sierra. They came by to visit because uh, Zach just bought a house, and John came down from Minnesota. And I didn't feel like going out to dinner that night, but I directed them down to a TLC, and that's where they went and had dinner that night. Yeah, you know, place. And the atmosphere, you know, yeah. uh, in or out of uh, TLC – you can sit on the deck and overlook Lake Ray Hubbard. Beautiful spot to uh, go out and have a nice night dinner uh, and just enjoy the atmosphere with some great food. Yep. So, all right, who do we got on? Who do we got on the line, brother? So, I'd like to welcome Doug Brown and the North Padre Cigar Club to the ninety nine percent Radio Network with Sideshow Mongo and Twelve. How's and, it going, and Duke? And Duke. How's it going, brothers? What's going on, guys? How are you, Doug? Can we hear him? How are you guys doing, doing today? today? We are doing great. Can you hear us all right? We got a good connection? Yes, yes. Yep. yep. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Roger that. So uh, in uh, in full disclosure, Mongo and I, uh, Mongo much longer than I, but I've known Doug since like uh, 88, 89, 90, somewhere right around you didn't there. Know him in 88, dude. When you started in 88. 88. Okay. Yep, yep. You started in Burbank in 92. No, in 88. We went in October 88. Oh, that's right. We did. Yeah, we, we did. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. When did he start? You know, no, he, he actually, he was in the academy. He, he graduated the academy about the time we, we signed on. Yeah. Because he was just yep. getting out yep. of the academy or he was just into training. Okay. Well, nonetheless, I've known him a long time. Mongo knew him for a lot longer. So, uh, and he uh, he did the smart thing and relocated from California and and moved to the the great state of Texas down to uh, to Padre. Awesome. Well, I mean, we're gonna. St I just want to let you guys know, both of you, that we're gonna start advertising for Ginkgo Biloba. 
All right, because <laughs> this way it helps you guys with your memories. I remember. <laughs> I've got an excuse. He's got none. I had it right. I've got an excuse. <laughs> so, Doug, <laughs> how are you, brother? How's retirement treating you? What's that? What's that? How's retirement treating you? Oh, good, oh, good, good, good. Loving it. Loving it. Huh? Well, well, I'm not, well, I'm not, not really not so much so retired now. I got, I got a couple of jobs. jobs. And, but uh, and, uh, still, still not full not time, time, but it's but awesome down here. We got a beautiful day out today. Finally got some sun. and we're still like still everybody, everybody recovering, recovering from that, from uh, that, uh, that weather we, we had, had, but it's, all, it's good. all good. So are are you two neighbors, or how did you guys get together? And tell us about your club. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey, hey, fellas, my name's Greg uh, Raynor, and, and, uh, and uh, I relocated from Los Angeles when I retired off, so I was uh, with the L.A. Fire Department for 35 years, and, and uh, Doug put out on Facebook, hey, anybody want to smoke cigars? And so uh, make a long story short, I responded real quick, and, we didn't know each other and started talking and found out we were from the same hometown and kids went to a competing high schools and he obviously was public safety and law enforcement so we kind of hit it off real well and I've you know, got a, a new buddy a new brother now so uh, it was a real, real cool story but uh, I agree with Doug you know the weather's been great today and uh, you know, I wish you guys were down here you could enjoy the water with us. That'd be great so I, I'm assuming that you uh, when you were working for the fire department you lived in the Santa Clarita area? I did, yeah. I lived in Santa Clarita and uh, worked for the department and worked my way uh, up quite a ways and got near the top and after 35 years decided, hey, i got to drop out and find a good place on the water and uh, found, a, found a good home and we started a cigar club and we've got about 22, 24 members now and meet every week. It's just a bunch of great guys and, uh, you know, guys that you, know, you, would, you would love to ride with, you'd love to hang out with and uh, we're real blessed. Now, down in South Padre, I mean, you guys getting, uh, I mean, spring breaks here. It's coming up. Are you guys getting inundated with uh, spring breakers? Uh, it's not. It's not as bad as South Padre. We're on. We're on North Padre. Okay. So we're just just off Corpus Christi, and we get we get a spring break crowd. But this year, it's a lot more family oriented than like in past years. It's typically college, but. I think the colleges are real limited in their spring break time off, so we've got a lot of families. The local businesses are busy, and the beaches are they're busy, but nowhere near like they they have been in the past. Yeah, uh, I have you know I've been in Texas for almost 13 years now, coming out of New York, and I've always wanted to uh, head down a uh, uh, South Padre, but now I have a reason to shoot to North Padre. Uh, it's a shorter drive. Yeah, I'm, you know we're gonna have to have a. a take a ride down there what do we just jump on um what is that 20 and just take it all the way down till uh just before we um hit the border crossing exactly just come <laughs> right on into corpus on the you can come in on the 30 to well from san antonio i think it's the 37 okay yeah we gotta we gotta take a ride down there that would be a lot of fun that'd so, be a nice ride so how you you guys got together by way of the internet how does everyone else hear about your club and do you guys meet the same location all the time? Or are you guys moving around? And how do you, I mean, do you guys have a cigar of the month type stuff? Or how do you pick all that stuff? Uh, in a nutshell, we uh, pretty much communicate uh, just via Facebook. I think we have like maybe one or two guys that aren't on Facebook, but we just text them. But yeah, we uh, we put it out like uh, well, middle of the week usually uh, where we're going to do it. It was primarily when we first started, either just my house or Greg's place. Um, but now with with the you know uptick in the guys we have, uh, we have a lot more opportunity to, to go to different places. And every Sunday typically has been uh, somebody else's place, whether it's like Greg's on the water or uh, my house uh, near the pool. But, uh, yeah, every Sunday we hang out, usually from about one thirty to like 5, 5.30. You know, there's nothing better than de-stress than just, like, to grab a little uh, thing of Irish whiskey and a, uh, and a stick with uh, some good buddies and, and just reminisce with some good memories. So, you know, that that's really what it is all about, man. That's That, that makes it a, a good day, a good day. Instead of power drinking Bud Lights, just sit back with a stick and a, a little cognac. See, we got to get you guys involved. We got a, uh, a Caribbean cruise coming up in the uh, in October. I think there's still space available. 
it's the uh, biker rally on the ocean, so you don't have to ride a bike, and obviously you can't ride a bike on the boat, but it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of drinking, a lot of smoking, a lot of hanging out, doing uh, lazy stuff. I bet you they will be drink- riding on that, because there's going to be a couple of bike builders on that boat for the high seas rally. Someone's going to ride that bike on that boat. It might, <laughs> it might happen. So, so Doug, I've been following you guys, uh, part of your Facebook page for a while, and it seems to me like – you know, we all we as Sideshow was just saying, we like to sit around and and uh, and smoke a stick and and have a drink. Sometimes it's beer, sometimes it's it's something else. But I noticed in uh, one of the pictures that y'all had uh, posted up, it might be your your uh, your Facebook uh, picture that there was a big cart of different uh, alcoholic beverages in there. So. You guys have been doing this for a while now. You've sampled a lot, lots of different cigars. Uh, I've seen a, a, you know, dozens of them. Literally, you guys kind of comment uh, on. Do you do you follow stuff like uh, Cigar Aficionado or Cigars International, and and you know, kind of go through the cigar of the month, or do you have, you know, you go to the the local humidor and find two or three that you like and bring them back and see if the other guys like them, and then how do you pair them up? What do you like to drink with them when you find that? You know, your two or three go-to uh, steaks. You know, it's like pairing a good steak with a fine wine or yeah. something like that or a good lager. So, yeah, I know. So, I, I, that's something I would like to know. How do you pair them? Well, you guys kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, you know, it is, it is really a, a nuanced thing. If you're into wine, uh, if you're into a dining with steak and a glass of wine, you know, cigars are very similar. And uh, the pairing can be really important. It doesn't necessarily have to be alcohol. Sometimes... The best pairing is like a, a cream soda or a root beer, a cup of coffee, uh, uh, a water. Um, but with our group, what I found is um, I've been smoking cigars for about 30 years, and uh, I picked it up at work. And at the end of the day, it was a way to kind of relax, go out and back at the fire station and have a cigar and, and uh, think about what had occurred that day and you know how you could be better. And uh, so with the guys that we have, we have such a you know, a diverse group of fellas that they have cigars that they smoke, that they like, the pairings they like, and they've shared them. And it, it's really been quite a, uh, a great lesson for me. I, you know, I've uh, evolved in the last probably three years here with smoking, and I've probably smoked hundreds of cigars that I would have never smoked in my life. And uh, it's just been really, uh, really cool. And I uh, look forward to the next year or two and, and uh, making more and more, more, and more friends and uh, uh, smoking a good cigar with them. And uh, the only thing that's a little bit different is, uh, it, you know, without riding, you know, a, a good day, uh, you know, on your bike, two, three hundred miles, you like to smoke maybe a cigar or a, have a have a beverage. Uh, we take kind of the riding part out of it and get straight to uh, relaxing and smoking, smoking a fine cigar with something to drink out by the pool or out by the Gulf of Mexico. So wow. Um, now let me ask let me ask something, Doug. For, as a novice, you know, uh, an amateur cigar smoker, what do you look for? in a cigar uh or or is it like for somebody who's just you know wants to sit back what is the best way to find the, your perfect cigar or your liking you know what do you what do you look for when you go into a cigar store to pick one out um for me uh it's it's been an uh, amazing transition when i first started smoking i uh leaned more towards uh mild cigars um, some c- flavored cigars like acid cigars are really good. Uh, they're frowned upon by serious cigar smokers, but <laughs> Greg, and I still, uh, Greg and I will still enjoy them. Um, they're, uh, they're far less, uh, I'm not going to say harsh, but they're not as uh, strong. Um, but we've kind of uh, evolved as this has gone. And we don't, uh, don't spend a lot of time looking at cigar aficionado and that kind of stuff. Uh, one of the guys in the club, Ricky Nichols, is back. One of the founders with me and Greg um, is like a cigar encyclopedia, and uh, I can attribute probably eighty to eighty-five percent of the new cigars that I've tried have been courtesy of Ricky. And that guy, he has connections all over the U.S., all over the world, where he finds stuff and. Uh, we were trading on like every Sunday we would trade, but now that the group's so big, um, we're just trading cigars one Sunday a month. But it's great because you got, you know, 
anywhere on average I'd say 10 to 12 guys show up and everybody brings something different so you walk away with 10 or 12 cigars and it's a great way for you know everybody to, to try different things and you you know you get an idea really quickly of the kind of stuff you like and the kind of stuff that really doesn't suit your your taste profile I guess I'd say now, so have, have any of your guys has ever taken the uh, the cigar tours we, we've got one of our guys in our club he goes every year down to uh, Central America somewhere they go to uh, where the Perdomo factory is Cuba yeah they go, oh. Nicaragua. They show up and they, they take you for three days and you get like uh, three cigars every morning every afternoon every evening and they take you through the whole process from uh, from where it's grown to how it's uh, processed to how they're actually made <clears throat> do any, any of you guys do those yeah, uh, actually, Ricky's done that, and uh, another one of the guys, Jorge, has been down there. Jorge's a, a, a doctor here in town. Um, yeah, like Greg, Greg was saying, our, our group is so diverse. We have uh, Father Sam from one of the local churches, and it's just uh, it's a great group of guys, and we, we really thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah, I like the fact that you've got a doctor that's in your group. Can you get him to write a note that it's okay for us to smoke sticks up here, too? I don't know if he would do that. <laughs> I'll write you on though. So, so you guys can see sideshow, right? You can see him right now. Can you can't? They can't see him. All no. right. Well, just from the sound of his voice, then you're going to have to make a judgment call here, Doug. Would you take sideshow <clears throat> for a white owl or a Tipperello kind of guy? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, I may be a novice. All right, but I know. I don't smoke Tipperillos. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real cigar. It really is. I know I, what, you, I, I, I know what I it is. I see where your mind went. I, yeah, I don't smoke those. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were able to place it from a voice, it would be a more uh, like a Tony Soprano type of cigar, something bold. You know. Big old dog turd looking thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like a 770, like a flathead 770. Well, see, it, and, yeah. and like with me, Doug, I I, I, I evolve every few months because I used to really big it, be big into the Olivia, Olivia's, but now uh -huh. I'm really big into the Perdomo's, and I'm sure in a couple months that might change again. Do you, you have a favorite? Uh, well, uh, based on – go ahead, Rick, because he's uh, – you know what? I, I really don't have a, a real number one favorite now. I've got about five favorites, and, uh, you know, we've kind of – we've got a saying here that if you got them, smoke them. And uh, if you like it, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. You know, smoke what you enjoy. Uh, it's about the experience of taking some time out, maybe reflecting on your day, your path, Brother. what you're doing, sharing some good times with buddies. And, uh, now, you know, uh, I couldn't say anything. I, I don't think I can say anything more about that. You know, I, I, have, I have a number of favorites right now. Uh, they have a, a recent release that just came out in the last week or two, and it's from Blackworks called The Hyena, and there was a lot of hype behind it. And a lot of us in the club have, have been able to acquire some of the 700 boxes that were made. So we're kind of going through that right now. Um, you know, but when the new things come out, we try them. Somebody will be able to get us hooked up, and we'll uh, review them a little bit and enjoy them together. Uh, but you're right, the Oliva, that uh, Serie B Milano Maduro, I was, I'm smoking that right now. It's actually a really great cigar. Now, I know a lot of guys uh, save the wrappers, right? They they like they collect the the cigar wrappers, the bands, right the, bands. Bands, the cigar bands. What's the significance of that? Is that just to remind you on which cigar you like best, or is it is it something that you know? I, I know a lot of you know cigar smokers that love to take the you know the cigar bands. What's the significance in that? Well, I, that I, took, I, took, I took the cigar bands uh, so I could make a bourbon tray for the fellas, you know, and you took them and. I bought a nice tray and got them glued down and put them down real nice, throw a coat of varnish on top. Oh, and nice. Reminds nice. you of all the, all the sticks you smoked, you know? Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a great idea. That's great my, idea. Uh, that's my next project, as a matter of fact. I've got I've got all the bands in a, in a jar. I've got more than I need. But I, I recently acquired a, uh, a spindle top table that I made when I was like in the 8th or ninth grade in, in shop class. I just got that from my folks. So that's going to be one of my projects uh, before football season starts is getting that thing varnished down, getting those things on there. Oh, very make cool. A nice tabletop. That's a great, great idea. All right. Duke, do you smoke cigars? No? He's, no, 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 not me. <laughs> so we're going to send you one, brother. Do any of your wives partake in the cigars with you? 
Uh, now, funny story, Janet. Uh, Janet's actually the reason that we have a club. She um, really doesn't like cigars at all. Doesn't like the way I smell when I'm done smoking cigars, but it was all her idea. She, I was sitting out here one day just having a cigar. That doesn't say goes, a lot about you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> just get out of the house and go smoke cigars. I hate the smell, but get out. <laughs> yeah. And she goes, well, why don't you see if anybody else on the island smokes and put something on the Facebook page. So I threw it out, and that's how I met Greg and Ricky. And it's just, I mean, we have guys. One of our guys actually lives in Northern California that we stay in touch with. Another guy's in Seattle that kind of goes back and forth here. Um, and then a bunch of guys from around the Corpus area, you know, anywhere out to about, I think Kevin's about 45 minutes away. Um, but, yeah, we've just been, you know, branching out and finding, you know, guys that like stuff. And as far as your, your swag comments earlier, we got a, we got three hats that are coming your way. So Very nice. Awesome. Well, right. I, I will say this. If, if you or any of your club members make it up to northeastern Texas, um, the the back third of my house is exclusively my bar and smoking lounge. I can smoke inside, outside, uh, depending upon the weather. But you guys are welcome to come up, uh, enjoy a stick, enjoy my bar, and just relax at the house. Appropriately, appropriately named the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll leave with a little radiation poisoning, but you'll be all right. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, thank you so much, Doug, uh, uh, for joining us today. Yes. We continue to, uh, to follow the North Padre Cigar Club, and uh, we're happy to, uh, to give uh, a shout-out to you all because, yep. to be honest, it's one of our favorite things to, uh, to do as well. And we're, we're trying to convert uh, um, Sideshow from uh, uh, those evil little sticks. To yeah, once I can give up smoking cigarettes and the meth – I'll be fine, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, damn habits. <laughs> we uh, we uh, we enjoy following you. We find it very informative and entertaining as well. So we we thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. Well, thank you guys so much for having Greg and I. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. And uh, thank you, Greg. I'll, I'll put some good stuff uh, in there with the hats, and you guys can smoke them and tell us what you think. Very good. All right. Sounds good. Great talking with y'all. Have a good day. You guys take appreciate care. It. You too. Tell Senior I need that bike. <laughs> Roger that. We'll let him know. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye. Take care. See you, buddy. Man, look at that, man. With the South Padre uh, Cigar Club, we, we were in Dublin talking about liquor. We're here in Texas talking about smoking cigars. We are just promoting bared habits all around, <laughs> you know? So kids, kids, when do we start talking about the women? <laughs> kids, if you're listening, drink cigars, smoke liquor, smoke, smoke, whiz, <laughs> smoke, whiskey. smoke cigars. Yeah, See? and don't let being married hold you back. <laughs> get a third of the house. Get a, take a third of the house and build yourself a bunker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just funny. It's like. Everybody, like the preacher over in Ireland's got his own little bar. He gets away from his wife. You got a third of your house away from your wife. You got, you know, the dog house away from your wife. These guys are like, his wife's telling him, get out, go smoke, you know, do something bad for yourself. You I know. don't like the smell, but have a <laughs> couple of them. <laughs> That's true love. If you don't know what true love is, you just heard it here on Thanks, Nine Nine. Honey. <laughs> Wow. Good times, good times. Man, you know what? I've never been down by Corpus Christi. Um, actually, I was with work, but I never really got to enjoy it. It's a beautiful place to be down there and uh, over in North and uh, South Padre Islands. Have you guys ever been? No, but my son will be going down there um, real soon. As soon as he finishes his uh, initial um, segment of uh, flight training, which because of weather, they keep getting delayed, but they're actually in flight training. As soon as he finishes the first class and gets his private pilot's license, um, they they came and asked for volunteers a while back to go to Corpus Christi, and he just he just lives around the corner from uh, from the base. He said I threw my uniform on. He was I was there at the office going I volunteer. So it's actually like about thirty minutes closer than where he's at right now in Pensacola. 
Uh, but he's going to be at Corpus Christi, so I would imagine I'll be going nice. down that way pretty soon. What's the travel time? I mean, I'm I'm not uh, probably, probably about, about six hours, five hours, five six no, hours, more than five hours, dude. Because no, no, I'm saying it's like five oh. hours to San Antonio, and I don't know how much farther on it, it is. It's, it's probably going to be about a seven to nine hour drive, depending upon how you drive and how you stop. Oh, okay, okay, down the, down there. That's not bad. That's not bad. You should see. You know? the, they. Uh, I guess it must have been from uh, Greg's house, though. There, it's like right on the the bay. The they've got like a covered patio with the ocean. What's right a there. golf? Huh? That's the Gulf. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, I know, but I'm just saying his. It's a big, where, big bay. Where they, <laughs> they call it the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> where they have their their meetings is beautiful. I mean, they they send pictures back. You know, they, there's you know wildlife that come up. Uh, I wasn't trying to crack it. <laughs> Those are college girls. <laughs> Those, are... <laughs> Those are cold people crossing the border. Yeah. No. Please don't feed the wildlife. <laughs> hey, it's that's a good one though. They the where, where they meet there at his house. It's really it is nice. And I mean honestly, for brotherhood and and uh, the oh yeah, you always talk yeah, about yep. the sit back and relax and. Uh, sip a, an adult beverage, and even if you don't want to do that, if you're just enjoying the the smoke, it, it's it, it's awesome. You, and I, I'd like to go down there. You and know, I, sometime. I was surprised to hear when he said when you were talking about pairing, you know, and you talk about you know having a, a nice glass of whiskey or a bourbon or something with with a cigar. You know, I was surprised to hear him say like a cream soda or um, you know water or coffee, different pairing thing. I could tell co- coffee, I can understand, but you know, like a cream soda or a, you know. Um, a non non alcoholic beverage. I didn't never even thought about being able to pair some ba- pairing a cigar with I, one of those. <clears throat> but a cream soda, yeah, I could I could see how that could definitely enhance the flavor. I smoked a, a sun grown Perdomo uh, champagne, ten year anniversary champagne. Is that, did I get that right, Mondo? Describe right? Yeah. <clears throat> and I I uh, paired it with uh, some Woodford Reserve whiskey. Right. And sipping whiskey, not not shooting whiskey, but just and I'll tell you what the it the taste the different taste the the real subtle different flavors of the cigar, um, and then that just the what it it's just uh it's very it's a it's a way to yeah, chill out yeah yeah it, you no know, it it's definitely is um and it's like anything else pairing something like a steak with a uh, with a beverage, but it is also a relaxing way to just sit back unwind from the day. So, uh, hey, if you, you know, once again, this, uh, the, the North Padre uh, Cigar Club is always looking for members. You can check them out on Facebook. They have people from as far away as California, um, and they're growing. So uh, be a part of that, that network, man, because, you know, you meet people, you stay in touch, you become a brotherhood, and um, you share different ideas. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. I mean, um, I enjoy following them, and I think Mongo does too. Huh? I said I enjoy following them because of that. The, yeah, no, you know, that's that brotherhood that uh, that they have there, and, <clears throat> and uh, um, it, you know, if you're down in the, the the Padre Island area and close by, definitely, and you like to smoke and drink. Yeah, it makes uh, me want to quit smoking worth, and start uh, smoking again. <laughs> <laughs> definitely be worth checking them out. So yeah, no, def- I'm I'm going to I'm uh, I'm going to like them on Facebook. We'll share them, and. Uh, Maybe we can get a take a ride down there one uh one day this summer, and uh, check out a, their pond. <laughs> That'd be nice. So uh, should we uh, take, take a, a break? commercial break before sure. we come back with Paul Tuttle? Yeah, that that sounds good, man. All right, this is Ninety Nine Percent Radio Network here in the Fishbowl. We are gonna come back with uh, OCC Paul Tuttle, and uh, I don't know if. Jim's not going to be with Jim's him. Jim's not going to be with Jim's him. Jim's not going to be Paul. with him. But yep. Paul, we with some exciting news coming to this big state of Florida. Stay tuned. We all know that safety comes first, but you don't want to look like your parents are sending you on a bike ride. Here at Micro DOT Helmets, we're focused on light DOT certified helmets that protect and still look great, so you don't have to look like that mushroom from Super Mario. Ah, if you have an accident, we'll ship you a fresh new helmet. Real lifetime warranty, only at Micro DOT Helmets, a veteran-owned business. We come from all walks of life. We don't need a reason to ride, or even a destination. It's not what or 
where we ride defines us. Because no matter where we're headed, it's what happens along the way that makes us who we are. We may not know where the ride will take us, but one thing's for sure. With the Law Tigers, you never ride alone. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, call 1-800-LAW-TIGERS, America's Motorcycle Lawyers. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm on, man. Hey, welcome, brother. Thank you for uh, for coming in. Just hold on one second. Welcome back to the 99% Radio Network here in the Fishbowl, broadcasting you live from Fishbowl Radio Network Studios here in the heart of the entertainment district of Arlington, Texas. Um, we have a special guest on the, on the phone right now, man, uh, with some exciting news that's coming to the great state of Florida here. Here very shortly. Welcome, OCC Chopper founder, motorcycle extraordinaire, Paul Tuttle Sr. Welcome. How you guys doing? All right. Doing awesome, brother. Hey, you got some exciting news yeah. coming up, and uh, let's share it with the world, man, because this is going to be um, iconic for the state of Florida. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's really exciting, but uh, so so I in. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yep. We can hear you. Yes, sir. Oh, we just don't have his picture up. Yeah, the, we, oh, we, we can okay. hear you, but there's no picture. Yeah, he's just no. calling. Oh, he's calling? Phone. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I was wondering why we didn't Skype. Yeah. Okay, cool. Got to have a picture, man. You know, that's all right. <laughs> we can hear you. Yeah. You got it up there, Duke? Uh, there you go. Hey, we're working on it. <laughs> so Yeah, so go ahead. Tell us all about the, um, the new venture. Yeah, so we're going to be, uh, well, we're opening up a shop, uh, a shop. Uh, retail, restaurant, and a museum in uh, Clearwater. And, you know, right now, the opening date is uh, set for the first week in uh, June. So we're getting there. Now, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, gone. No, I was going to say, I was reading up on it, man. It's more than that. You're putting a venue, a music venue as well in there? Is, uh, that's going to be Yeah, closer? yeah. There's there's a uh, like pavilion that butts up against our uh, restaurant that's um, twenty five thousand square feet and there'll be bands there almost every night they'll have a band there so there's always every night there's always something going on and that's at, it's at um, or Charlie Davidson that's Barracuda or Harley Davidson dealership or so we're on we're on the same compound as they are so you know there'll always be there will always be something going on. So, if you guys have now set the date for the first week in June, Paul, uh, is construction complete? Uh, no, just it, it's not. They're going to start the, all the the pour, uh, the floors are poured. Uh, they're expecting the the, the building on uh, the twenty third of this month, and then they'll start erecting it. So, you know, the first week in June is. Very realistic. That's awesome. Tell us about the museum. Now, the museum is going to feature uh, the bikes that you've built. Um, what else could uh, folks, you know, look forward to seeing in, in this museum? Well, we're going to have the bikes, but we're also, I have, uh, like, I have the last 19 years that we've been on TV. I have every piece of memorabilia from day one. Wow. So it's a huge... Wow. It's a huge collection, so I think that, you know, between the fire bike and the, and the POW, you know, we have all the, we have thousands of patches that we had in, on our wall um, in New York, so all that stuff's moving down there, so I think it's going to be, I, I really think it's going to be, people are really going to appreciate going into that museum. You know, one thing I did see, too, and this goes out to all our veterans and our first responders out there, that do, Paul, uh does collect patches for that patch wall. Um, 
and it, this is supposedly some it's a huge patch laurel and a lot of guys would like to get their patches on it and they've been sending them to paul could people still send patches to you paul from around the uh, nation tons you have no idea you have no idea it's so cool um you know, the wall just gets bigger and bigger, you know, and, and it's just, it's really amazing. It's really amazing to see. I mean, you know, just think about, the like, a huge wall, tw- you know, like 20 foot high by wow. however long from, no, you can't even see a, a square inch of wall. It's just patches. And then people, you know, they their fire hats and, and uh, shirts and axes and, I'm telling you, it's it's uh, it's really something that that you you shouldn't miss, you know. And uh, you know, we're really big into the military, our military and police and and firemen. So we're expecting, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, a lot of people to come and and be part of that that wall. That you know, you've always. Um OCC has always been a big supporter of our first responders and our veterans, and we thank you so much for putting that together and no, letting, thank you. letting them be part of that museum. Um, you know, I could see this bringing such um, such tourism to this part of Florida. It's St. Petersburg, correct? Yeah, yeah, Clearwater, St. Petersburg. Clear, Clearwater, yeah. St. Petersburg. You know, and that's going to be the place to go, man, because – it's gonna. It's you, you're part of history. You're a part of history when you're gonna walk into this museum and you're gonna walk into this roadhouse. There's so much. <laughs> so, Paul, what's it like logistically to have to move? You know, 16 years worth of uh, of memories, plus all the bikes, plus the tools, all the the stuff that goes with manufacturing motorcycles from New York all the way down to you know mid Florida. What is that like logistically? Dude. Dude, you have no idea. That was like that was really that was really like a nightmare. You know what I mean? We had a hundred thousand square foot building. You know that was eighteen years of accumulation of everything that you can possibly think of, and to gather all that stuff and to make that move down there down to uh, Florida was yeah it was quite a task. You know it, it really was. It was it was months and months of constantly moving. Um, I'm glad that I don't have to do that again. <laughs> I, <hope. laughs> you know, I could yeah. imagine it was a nightmare for yeah. me to move from New York to Texas from with a one bedroom, a two bedroom house. I can't imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, Listen, when Mikey moves, he's the only. When Mikey moves to a different apartment, the only thing he moves is his pillow. <laughs> he doesn't have anything else. So you uh, also had. To I want to be him. <laughs> you you also moved uh, your collection of animals, right? Yes, we have a farm in Brooksville. Oh wow! Um, which is it's it's a really cool place. You know, it's all farms. We have like eleven acres, and you know, we have horses and cows and pigs and and stuff like that. So we're happy. You know, we we're big big animal uh, people, me and my wife, and you know, we rescue uh, all our animals. So yeah, it's it's um, it, uh, it it it's it's great to be. Kind of like out in the country there, you know, because, you know, the, the, the place where the restaurant is, it's kind of, uh, that's like a city almost down there, which is really cool. But then you get to go home to the country there and just kind of kick back on the porch. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we we had you on the show uh, some months back, like right after this first came out, and talked to you about a lot of your experiences. But from watching the show, you get the uh, – uh, Previously, up in New York, you get the impression that uh, Orange County and the town where you lived and, you know, the show featured your house there, that it was kind of like rural, small town uh, America, you know, at least that's the way it seemed to be depicted in the show. I don't know, it might be a big metropolitan area, but it looked... No, 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 it was small. Newburg is pretty small. Yeah, it's not, it's not a big town at all. So is it then... I know you've been to you know New York City and traveled all over the world and stuff, but having lived in in uh, uh, a relatively small town and then relocating to to Florida, where your your shop is now in a major metropolitan area, is that kind of culture shock for you? No, I've been around the world a few times. You know, what I mean, so no, it's not it's not really. You know, it, you know, I think from a business perspective, um, it's really that's where you want to be. You know, speaking about business perspective, you know, you got you have a definite mind for business. 
uh, you've grown into this uh, amazing, amazing um, thing that's known all over the country as you know the Orange Ca- of the world of Orange County Choppers. Did you ever did you ever envision eighteen years ago that you would be here today building a world class museum and restaurant in in Florida? Did you ever picture this? <laughs> no. It's actually funny, you know, because because really I'm just a blue collar guy. You really? know, I had a steel steel fabricating business for thirty years. You know, so when when they found me, I was already fifty. I don't know, fifty two or somewhere around that. So you know, yeah. So I didn't really like taking pictures. Never mind being on TV. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know, but, uh, you did it. You you know, and, and uh, you're you're um, you know, you show that dreams do come true. You know, hard work, perseverance, and you know, it doesn't matter. And like you just said, fifty two years old. A lot of people go, "Oh, I'm too old to start this. I'm too old to be there." But you know what? You did it. You you really are the blue collar American dream, and and show that with with you know some little blood, sweat, and tears, man. Look what you can achieve, and look look what you can bring to the table. So real proud of you over here, well, brother. Real proud of you. Thanks, thanks, man. And but if you look at it, I'm 72 now, and I'm doing it all over again. <laughs> yeah, but you're you a young I mean? 72, man. 72 is like the new 62, right? I mean, I'm yeah, watching yeah, you yeah, ride I, that bike. Yeah, I agree. Dude, you're in better shape than I am, man. I'm 54. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> I almost had to start laughing. You, you, you were talking about all the accomplishments that you had, and you said, did you ever envision you'd be talking to us on the radio? <laughs> like, there you, you go, man. Three, three, right. three knuckleheads from Texas, right? <laughs> uh, hey, Paul might be our big time. break. Who knows? Yeah, right? yeah, there you go. So, Paul, are you guys <laughs> planning on uh, – uh, so you got the, the grand opening date set for the first week in june will that be the uh, on the weekend or do we know a like a hard day yet no no i don't i don't have that but you know i'm sure like you'll be you'll have uh, plenty of time i'm, I'm sure that you, everybody will be knowing about it way before um the opening you know things are rough now this you know what i mean like it seems that you know it's hard to get things it's hard to get uh materials and so you're dealing with all that too so it's really you know, hard to get a hard date. You know what I mean with all the all, all the junk going on. But but we feel we feel pretty confident that that it'll be the first week in awesome. in June. Well, are y'all planning on doing like a a special build? Uh, you, you know, for the for the grand opening, something to to kick stuff off down there. Yeah, actually, we're doing two actually right now for the. For the grand opening, yeah. So you, there'll, there'll be two, maybe three. <laughs> oh wow! I don't know. <laughs> so that'll be cool too. You know, I, I think it's going to be great. You know, I think that uh, a lot. I'm getting a, um, you know, the welcome I'm getting is, is like next to none. You know, people are happy that I'm that I'm that I'm coming down there. So you know, I appreciate all that stuff, and it just makes you feel even better. Um, I like the state of, of Florida. You know, there, there, there's a little bit more freedom there than the, than, than the way it is in uh, New York, and the, the governor there is the best. <laughs> He's the absolute best. But uh, So, you know, that makes it a lot easier, too, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I just got to throw a joke in here. Just I got to get the comedic side in. You know, it's OCC you know, is moving from New York, right, to Florida. And, you know, in New York we always say, you know, People move to Florida. It's God's waiting room. You know, is OCC now going to move transition from like uh, choppers to like, you know, rascals <laughs> tricking out rascals? You know, <laughs> that was good. That was better than I thought it was going to be. You know, I, I could see the old timers. You know, you can hear the, the early bird special crew. You know, getting uh, into the OCC. Getting, hey, Paul. You know, can you put something? Put a set of rims on this or, or trick out my, uh, yeah. you know, nursing home rascal for me, you know? Hey, you know, some <laughs> yeah. friends of ours are down there, and uh, maybe we could hook them up and, uh, you know, like a like a, a mobster mobile. You yeah, know? you know, that's, that's going to be Paul in 82 yeah. and 92. He's going to be tricking out the rascals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be cool. That would be cool. Well, but. <clears throat> listen, I know you're a busy guy, yeah. and uh, we don't want to keep you uh, – um, from uh, your 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 day, we appreciate. It. I know you've had a full one already. Uh, talking to Jim a little earlier, or texting with Jim a little earlier. 
Thank you so much, Paul, yeah. uh, for taking time to uh, taking out of your time to spend with us. We're so looking forward to uh, coming down there and uh, being at the at the uh, grand opening. It's going to be a big treat for us just to uh, to see it all and report back to uh, folks all around the world. Because you would not believe the the feedback after we had you on the first time, uh, and then the feedback leading up to to having you on today. Um, from people around the world, like yeah. you were honestly in the Czech Republic, you were like a god. <laughs> yeah, getting a, <laughs> getting a lot, truth. getting a lot That's of feedback you know. from those guys. Yeah, yeah, they, we get a lot of feedback from from the. I mean, they watch your show religiously. You know, they have it on VHS. And, <laughs> <laughs> but they they do. Well, we well, yeah. we actually think they're talking good about you. We have to use Google Translator yeah. to find out what the hell they're saying. <laughs> Something may have got lost in the translation. Yeah. But, <laughs> they, uh, they think very highly well, here, so people are really interested in this. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, our, co- our show played in 160 countries, so it's really, you know, it's really all over the world, you know, and no matter where I go in the world, you know, people people know me, so it's a, it's a great feeling. And, uh, you know, I think that this is going to even, uh, you know, making this next move is, you know, going to launch it to... To a next in, in, a next step too, so I'm yeah. I'm uh, I'm super excited about it, you know. And then, listen, I appreciate you guys having me on your show. Thank you so much. You yeah. know, what, just before you go, I want to make Mongo's point there, and and kind of what you were saying. You know, you have worldwide fame. You know, known all over the world, wherever you go. Oh, that's Paul Tuttle Senior from OCC, but yet you don't. You you come across. You seem like a guy that is that blue collar worker just a regular guy you got worldwide fame but you're a regular guy you're approachable you're talking to three knuckleheads in texas right now that that just kind of proves that and you know it clearly the the fame does not seem to have gone uh to your head and and i think that's one of the qualities uh, about you that you know uh, americans are um, they like blue collar workers. They, they like relate. people that they can, can relate. do stuff, yeah, yeah, with their hands and all. And I think that has to be a contributing factor to your success. And we wish you a lot more of it. Yeah, we're we're also Thank very you. excited about your opening, and we're looking forward to coming down there and covering it for on our meager little radio program. But it's it's going to be fun for us, and we're looking forward to it. Yep. Thanks again, Paul. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Have Thank a you. happy St. Patty's Day. Uh, have a couple of libations thanks, and enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. You guys, too. Thanks again. Take care. Right. Thanks, Bye. brother. All right. Yeah, that was Paul Tuttle Sr. with Orange County Choppers, man, with his big news about um, moving to Clearwater, Florida, with the Roadhouse Museum and Restaurant with a 25,000-square-foot venue for music, uh, but up right next to um, a Harley-Davidson dealership. This is going to be the place to be on for, to go on vacation, uh, you know, there's going to be so much to do, so many events. It's it's going to be a place. He's going to bring so much to Clearwater uh, and that area. I'm going to start making room <clears throat> in my closet because I know I'm getting at least two T-shirts. <laughs> one from Orange County, one from Marley. There you go. No, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, and when you just said that, uh, 12, about a blue-collar worker, and he, he is, he really, he, he, he has never really come off. You never hear anything bad. You, you know, he... Some of these guys that have uh, these claim the fames and the whole bit, but he's a uh, he's the true American. He's for the true American worker, the true blue collar. Supports our veterans, supports our first responders, letting them be part of his right. museum. You know, it's it's just an amazing story throughout that uh, he has he has brought America together. Well, you know what was cool to me, and what I was thinking as I was asking him that is when we talked to him the first time. You know, he doesn't know uh, at that point. He didn't know us from Adam, you know. But he took the time. Uh, Jim yeah. Kerr took the time to uh, to. Uh, they talked to us for like what thirty, forty minutes the first time around, and then he invites us to go down there and cover that. He didn't have to do that because he's no. going to have Discovery Channel there. Every every news yeah. media outlet in Florida will be there covering it because it's a big deal. But he invited us. I know. I'm, I'm know? so I'm so we're, I'm so honored that he's. Uh, he, he he's taking a chance on us three knuckleheads, yeah. Yeah. you know, and uh, I, I'm I'm really honored to be part and of that. Today he, he he picks up the phone and calls us. He doesn't have his PR people. There's yeah. there's no middle people. It's hey, this is Paul. You know, how's it going? Yep. And uh, I I appreciate that about 
people like that 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 aren't uppity that you know you don't have to go through a middleman to uh uh to talk to them or, or reach out to them and uh i'm i'm i don't know about you guys but i'm honored that we're going to get to go yeah. down there and and uh you know our little radio show will be down there covering one of the biggest events in in yeah. the bike world it, yeah. it's not yeah, may yeah, not be yeah. the biggest but it's certainly a big one. Oh yeah this is so what were you gonna say mongo oh no I, i'm you're a, you're at a loss for words <laughs> I, I'm kind of shocked that he said that because I know when I call his house, I got to go through his wife, and I got. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Just trying to get in touch with twelve. It's easier to get in touch with Paul than it is to get in <laughs> touch with twelve, right? But but fame of ninety nine has gone to his head. <laughs> yeah, oh. you know. Uh, hey, once again, who's man. the only one that has groupies? That's you. you yeah, have, you, you, you got have, groupies. You got one hundred percent more than me and Sideshow do. 200%. 200%. percent <laughs> Whatever. All right. His voc- <laughs> math we, is not his <laughs> strong math point. And vo- vo- <laughs> math and English were not his, his best subjects. <laughs> so, man, it's been a great show so far, and um, we got we got a lot more to come. You know, we got a new uh, monologue we'll, today. We got a new monologue, but I do want to touch. I, I forgot I wrote this down on my notes. It's about <coughs> uh, April 30th. We have the Ocho Awards yes. coming up. Uh, 12 Once you just tell us a little bit about uh, where, where we're set with that and uh, how people can be part of that and um, what it's going to be. What, this another uh, step for the 99. So on Friday night, April 30th, we're having the inaugural Ocho Awards and Bike Night. It's going to be held at the Hella uh, Shriner Event Center, uh, 2121 Rowlett Road in Garland. It is a beautiful uh, ballroom, beautiful setting. Um this is going to be the the 99 made the decision to honor uh, our friend and brother Ocho, who uh, tragically passed away um, the day after Thanksgiving last year of COVID. He had some underlying health issues, but the the cause of death was listed as COVID. And this guy was such a a, a part of the give back community. He firmly believed in making a difference, uh, and he put his money where his mouth. Uh, uh, was every single time. Uh, anytime uh, in my employment at the V Rock, if I needed help, I could call him up and he stepped up, never said no, always right there. How can I help this person better? This, and you know, you, right. he, he loved, he walked the walk. Vets. He walked the walk, and we couldn't think of a better way to um, uh, recognize all the clubs from all around the world that we're aware of that are making a difference by naming an award for them we wanted to do something to recognize them and then naming it after uh, our brother ocho so that's how the the name came about so on friday april 30th uh we've invited and if you are listening and part uh if you're an independent motorcycle rider in any way shape or form associated with the law body 99 percent uh motorcycle community you're invited to this um we have we're going to be giving away uh awards uh, to clubs and individuals that have demonstrated since the origin of our show uh, a constant, uh, uh, I don't know what the word that I want to use, Mongo, maybe you can help me out, propensity for making a difference. Pro- propensity. Right? Did I get it right? Wow. Did I get it right? Yeah. Propensity oh, works. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Uh, uh, my mama would be proud of <laughs> me and my education. Uh, but who have constantly, uh, from at least the beginning of our show, made a difference in their community, whether it's feeding the homeless, uh, doing home repairs, um, building homes. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things. Yeah, but it we, goes on and on. It goes on and on. So we came up with some criteria um, to use, and we we know who the winners are. They've been selected. Um, and basically it'll be for... Uh, we're going to give a, a an Ocho Award for making a difference on a local basis, meaning maybe you're a small club, you don't have uh, many chapters, you don't maybe you don't have any chapters uh, associated with your club, just you're located in one geographical area, but you're making a difference in that area. So we're going to give it for a, a local award. We're going to give one for a regional award. Say if you get you know. Like DFW, for example, if you had chapters around DFW or, um, you know, your your chapters located uh, in uh, 
Albuquerque, New Mexico, for example, and you have chapters around you or whatever. Um, we're going to give regional awards, and then we're going to give a national award if you have a, a club that on, on a national level is constantly making a difference. And then we're going to do it the same for uh, a, an international, uh, on an is- international level. And then we're going to have an award, a brotherhood award. Um, we're going to have um, a legacy award uh, for someone that we've been able to, to look at and uh, vet that, that's been making a difference in this community for a long time. And then we're going to have uh, a man and woman of the year uh, for that individual that has uh, consistently gone out there in the community and made a difference trying to make people's lives better. And then <clears throat> it's going to be red carpet entrance. Uh, it's really cool. Yeah. I, I've, I've been down there uh, and uh, looked at looked at the venue, and so it'll be a red carpet entrance. Cardio B is going to be doing her lesbian <laughs> act. <laughs> uh, no, I, just kidding. I don't think she's going to make. No, it. No, she won't make it. But we'll have uh, we'll have that. We'll have a photographer there. I, I don't know if. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, I reached Rick, out to him. Is, uh, yep. I don't know if he's Rick, got back. Yep. Rick Irvin uh, was honored to be the uh, the awards photographer for that night. So. He will be snapping pictures as people arrive and walk the red carpet. Oh, they'll be awesome, um, then, man. They'll so, be... yeah, he'll, he'll be taking all the pictures for the red carpet entrance. He'll be taking pictures throughout the night. Um, and when we talk about the international awards, we will have an area of the ballroom set up where you will be able to um, interact with uh, clubs around not only – the nation but around the world we will have it opened up we'll have a link set up so that you can hear from our and interact with our brothers over in england london the czech republic italy all over the world whoever's logged in lots of brothers in Italy. yeah so i like the fact that we're going old school too and, and actually recognizing a male and female only because with there being 21 genders available <laughs> that we're only going with two that, that's old school yeah, 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 we're like very that. old school yeah, we, we're not going to go by any identifiers. <laughs> <laughs> identifiers. We're going, right, we're going strictly check the box, male or female. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, so uh, I, that's, I'm really happy to hear about Rick's involvement with it because that guy yeah, takes he, he was the honored. best uh, pictures. Yep. Um, and so <clears throat> we have, uh, there will be barbecue uh, plate lunch, uh, dinners available for purchase. Uh, from Big Rome's Barbecue Empire, uh, Ruben Big Rome guy, I guess we've had him on the show before. Guy can cook, uh, you know, like pulled pork, brisket, uh, uh, maybe chicken and turkey uh, legs, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, and sides. Uh, we'll have, uh, uh, we'll be giving away beer, courtesy of uh, Dave Swavey and the Guns and Hoses Foundation. Um, we'll have desserts available for purchase uh, courtesy of Chastity and David Llewellyn from Fifth Avenue Nutrition in Garland. Uh, Harley Davidson of uh, Garland uh, will be there as well. Law Tigers will be there. Uh, uh, Microdot, Microdot Helmet. Helmet. Scoot Dog will be there. Um, we'll be entertained uh, beginning right around 7 o'clock uh, by the Three Drunk Monkeys. Uh, we'll take a break. Uh, around eight eight thirty ish somewhere in that uh, in that ballpark uh, to do the uh, the awards and then uh, we'll finish off the night uh, quite possibly we'll we're, we're talking with uh, Howard Scott uh, currently of Lowrider f- the founder of the uh, the group War uh, Future we had rock him on last roll. week had yeah him on last yep. week Future Rock and Roll Hall of Famer uh, uh, we're talking now with him about having him and. Uh, uh, three of the other original members of War come and play. Uh, how that will fit in with all of it, we don't know, but we're going to make it fit for Dancer. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And then the night will finish off. We have uh, the tribute band, the Ario Speedwagon tribute band, High Infidelity. Um, you might have them all up there jamming at one yeah, time, which would be really awesome. It's going to be a great night. <clears throat> It'll be a great night. Plus, we have the Dallas Pinup Girls. Yes. Uh, they'll be there to uh, uh Take pictures, sign autographs, uh, and they'll be helping uh, pass out the uh, the awards. Uh, post- Mongo volunteered to uh, be their bodyguard that All night, right. so he's um, just he's just trying to get more fans, yeah. fan base. <laughs> um, you know, and all of this, all of this, you would think for all of this night, this wonderful night, this awards ceremony, it, ten dollars at the door, ten dollars, ten dollars. So you know. 
tell me you can't afford ten dollars at the door to go to this great cause for our motorcycle uh, brothers and sisters around the world. So well, I mean, this you, is can't, our you can't, you to can't say beat thank this. You. Yeah, you can't beat that. Um, we didn't want to outprice it. We didn't want it. We wanted to make it affordable for everybody. Um, plenty of motorcycle parking, but you know what? Hey, treat that lady. Get you know, armor all your vest and get in that limo. Because how cool would it be coming out of limo with a cut, walking on a red carpet? You know, people snapping pictures, signing autographs, the whole bit. It'd Look, be a lot this of fun. is this is this is the ninety nine percent radio network's chance to say thank you to uh, to all these clubs. Um, it's because of of them uh, and and our commitment to trying to help make a difference. Um, you know, we've we've done that right from the very beginning. Um, that has led us to reach one point eight million people. I yeah, mean, come on, this little bitty show is is getting it out there and and i think it's safe to say that that we're able to help clubs with charitable events because we have an audience we can get the word out there um you know all the way around the world and like like i was saying our our second biggest audience is in italy yeah you know it's unbelievable and and there's a whole bunch of of clubs uh that were founded many of them are here now in the united states but th- that follow us faithfully every week you know and you think about once once the restrictions across the nation and across the world are opened uh and everybody gets back to a better better sense of normalcy you know when we talk about the chaotic angels over in the uk that just fed forty six thousand homeless veterans throughout uh london england right we we i'm i'm, I'm i want to see what italy's going to do what the czech republic's going to do what all these wonderful uh clubs uh, international clubs, what they are doing for their uh, respective areas. Once they can get out there and start, you know, producing because you know we said over over a hundred million dollars is produced every year just in our nation alone from uh, you know the motorcycle clubs fundraisers yeah. that go to charitable organizations. So I can just see what it's going to be internationally once he's once these clubs get out there and they start doing what they they have so much passion to do. You know, speaking about clubs, um, we we do have some upcoming events that I'd like to play real quick. Uh, all, don't worry about grabbing a pen. Check these out. Uh, they will all be on the 99% Radio uh, Facebook page, but we want to uh, just share some of the upcoming events with you now. man uh those are some of the events from our local uh and not so local clubs uh from around our nation out of holding some uh charitable fundraising events please check them out on our facebook page um and try to attend man try to donate and uh you know so and help them race a little cash for their charitable uh organizations I like that. That was freaking, that was pretty cool, right? That, you that like was that? very awesome. I like to throw one more in there. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't have time to, to put it together. Um, I'll I'll get it up on our uh, Facebook page here, um, probably tomorrow. Um, Tank Gibson, we had Tank Tank filled yep. in while you were gone. He's a Garland PD motor officer. Uh, him and a couple other folks have asked us to um, talk about the uh, Garland Police Department uh, POA the uh, Police Officers Association there uh, is doing a fundraising effort to support Lieutenant Chris uh, Carker. He's in charge of the uh, Garland PD traffic unit. Uh, he's fighting for the second time uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and they're going to be uh, offering custom T-shirts. I, I saw the the mock-up uh, of it, the the computer. I thought design. I had that on there, but I thought I had the flyer. I, I, I put that flyer on there, but. Um, I didn't it may have went too fast. No, 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 you're okay, good. You're I, good. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're uh, good. Anyway, they're they're introducing a custom T-shirt. 
Uh, it's 25 bucks uh, uh, a, a shot with all the pr- proceeds going to uh, uh, Lieutenant Carker. And I, I, I think we'll have uh, the guys uh, from uh, the motor unit come back on uh, in the near future when once they get a you know a working copy of that. Right. It's a cool. Uh, the 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 mock-up was really cool, and uh, we definitely want yeah. to try to support uh, the lieutenant. Uh, in this in this deal as well. Yes, and we'll I know, figure. I know a lot of the folks from around the DFW area want to support. We'll have all the information on how you can get one of these T-shirts and uh, help support our our hero uh, in his second battle. So yeah, for twenty five bucks, um, you get a nice T-shirt front and back, and we'll show you how to get all that and um, how you can order one yep. uh, real soon. We'll just look for our details on our Facebook page. Yeah, um, could, they coming get a, soon. You can get soon. a hold. We'll get a hold of one of us. Yep. One of us, and we'll yep. we'll make it happen. Yep. All right. So uh, once again, with his two groupies probably sitting eagerly by the uh, the radio or their phones, whatever they're listening to us on. Um, I'm always proud to announce this. Coming up is the Mongolog. Santa Maria! I believe it. And may one of you friends and neighbors kind of gather around and... Holy shit! (laughs) Here comes Mungo! All right. So, today's Mungo Log. I need my two fans and my mother to put your earmuffs on for the first line, please. Like the useless ugly tits attached to Nancy Pelosi's front side, the recent $1.9 trillion COVID stimulus bill is full of useless ugly pork. House Democrats recently passed a $1.9 trillion emergency COVID relief bill. The bill includes a ton of funding in areas completely unrelated to the pandemic. The 591-page bill proposed on Friday the 19th includes an additional $300 billion to state and local governments, $130 $130 billion to schools, which the big guy refuses to open, and an additional $19.1 billion for housing assistance. It also doles out $473 billion in cash payments to individuals, $1,400 for those who earn less than $75,000 a year, and an additional $400 in federal weekly unemployment benefits and raises the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour. The Wall Street Journal editorial board estimates that the entire nearly $2 trillion proposal proposed only about $825 billion, less than half is directly related to the pandemic. The majority of funds are direct, directed, to, directed to expansion of progressive programs, pork, and unrelated policy changes. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi are banding together in their efforts to revive pork barrel politics so they can pass even more funding for progressive dreams. Bringing back earmarks could allow Pelosi to bribe lawmakers with relief for their constituents in exchange for passing progressive left bills that would likely not pass otherwise. The bill is indeed a Democratic wish list, but ultimately has little to do with the pandemic. Hidden throughout is funding for basically every piece of Democratic agenda disguised as a way to help Americans through these difficult times at a time when our projected deficit for 2021 is 2.3 trillion dollars not including any additional stimulus we do not need to give corrupt politicians and lobbyists more tools to feed their spending addiction and line their own pockets if we continue on this path it won't be long before Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen will have to call JG Wentworth for cash now (laughs) got that. I got that. <laughs> you watch daytime TV. I watch daytime TV, yeah. That was pretty good. Um, <laughs> Americans might have been forgiven for hoping that Congress would just just this once not include billions of pork barrel spending in the latest COVID bill, relief bill. Millions of Americans are struggling with the health and financial crisis, and Congress had a chance to prove that they care more about helping their constituents than giving handouts to their favorite special interests and political groups. As you probably heard, those hopes were dashed 
in disguised, disgusting fashion. The COVID-19 relief bill includes spending items for countless items, issues that have nothing to do with the pandemic. The bill wastes taxpayer money on everything under the sun while our country continues to rack up trillions in debt that our children and grandchildren will have to pay off. Here are five of the worst spending items in the legislation. $25 million for Pakistan. <clears throat> of the funds appropriated under Title III of the Act, there are made available for assistance for Pakistan. Not less than $15 million will be made available for democracy programs, and not less than $10 million will be made available for gender studies programs. That's in Pakistan, because that's very important. Money for histor historians. Funds for resource studies of the Springfield, Illinois race riot that occurred in 1908. There's actually a commission tasked with educating consumers about the dangers associated with using or storing portable fuel containers or flammable liquids near an open flame. The Kennedy Center, again, gets its allowance. Another $40 million will be allocated for the necessary expenses for the operation, maintenance, and security of the Kennedy Center, which received $25 million in another COVID bill, COVID relief bill earlier this year. Also, I have a question about that yes. right there, not to make you lose your th oh, train of you thought. you made me lose my spot. What? So all that money going to the Kennedy Center, they're not offering any performances there. There's like one guy on duty, the janitor, just to keep the building you know, secure. What are they doing with that money? What are they doing with it? Why in the hell would any person, I know none of the Republicans voted for it, why would any person vote to give all that money yeah. to something that's not even open? I'm I, Well, I would guess, my, my guess is that they're paying the musicians and the, the, the people at the Kennedy Center because, as I was just about to oh, say. Oh, sorry, brother. No, no, no. Also, in a related story, the Kennedy Center has been and remains closed. This is exactly where we should be spending our hard-earned and easily lost tax dollars. You're right. The Kennedy Center is not open, even with the money that we provided them on two occasions now. Jesus. Millions of dollars for random countries around the world. $86 million for assistance to Cambodia. $130 million to Nepal. $135 million to Burma. $453 million to Ukraine. $700 million to Sudan. I'm not a politician, and I probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but it seems to me... <clears throat> What? Good. Spit it out. Spit it out. Say say what it seems to you. Yeah, it seems to me you tell all these countries to take a flying leap and not give them a dime while our people are suffering. You know, just let me just cut you off real quick. And I don't know if you brought this up yet. I had left the room for a second. Who's paying for uh, the the Katy uh, Center when we get three thousand uh, teenage kids coming in here from across the border? Oh no, we, uh, we talked about that. Uh, we, this. The, the both stimulus bills had money for the Kennedy Center. No, he's no, no, no. The, 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 the Katie Bailey, Kay, you know, Kay Bailey Hutchinson. right here in Dallas. Kay now Bailey. now, oh, now yeah. we're going to be housing three three thousand. Oh yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. That's for ninety days. Who's who's paying for that? I, I hadn't gotten into that. Oh, I don't okay. I don't. This, it's not part of this, and I didn't get into that. Oh, okay. But that's more money. Yeah, more absolutely. pork. Okay. One might be hard for us to believe that Congress could be this irresponsible. Or maybe they aren't. Our elected leaders have for years wasted our hard-earned taxpayer dollars on projects and initiatives that do nothing to serve we the people. It's time for a change in D.C., and a convention of states is the best way to make it happen. An Article 5 convention of states can propose constitutional amendments that force Congress to be fiscally responsible. These amendments, for example, can make a balanced budget without raising spending or taxes. Such amendments would compel Congress to cut wasteful, unnecessary, and duplicative programs and spend on only essential functions of the federal government. After a convention of states, Pakistan can say goodbye to its funding for gender studies. The federal government will only be allowed to spend money on things approved by we the people, and our nation will finally start down the road towards social and fiscal security. The big guy, our current president, has challenged those who oppose the Democrats' $1.9 trillion bill, disingenuously dubbed COVID relief or the more deceitful American Rescue Plan, by asking, what would they have me cut? Well, he asked, so challenge accepted. The Washington Post editorial board 
thinks the spending is too much and misdirected. It has concerns that the bill's costs are growing across the political spectrum. With COVID-19 cases down, hospital admissions and deaths decreasing, and vaccines, and with vaccine promised to be widely available to the general public by July, <clears throat> and with possible herd immunity coming soon, the best stimulus to the economy would be to reopen businesses, allowing people to return to work while practicing health and safety measures. Many who received the money from the government, the last stimulus, go round, <clears throat> go round, bank the checks. I'm sorry from the last stimulus go around, banked the checks, and spent very little to none of it. The money targeted to state and local governments, virtually all run by Democrats, don't need it. And an analytical examination of states' finances, which shows that 31 states have enough money to fully absorb the economic stresses of COVID-19 without, substantially, without substantial budget cuts or tax increases. That's just for starters. Pork doesn't even begin to describe the unrelated COVID-19 spending. The Wall Street Journal has noted most of the House bill has less to do with the virus and more to do with paying lobbyists and other groups favorable to Democrats. There's another $7.2 billion for paycheck protection, which again would be less expensive and possibly unnecessary if businesses were allowed to reopen. When this money runs out and businesses are still mostly closed, will there be more spending? Adding to the already unsustainable debt, there's $86 billion to rescue 185 pension plans, which have been chronically underfunded due to the lax federal standards and accounting rules. Yet the bill, I'm sorry, yet the bailout comes with no real reform. That's the thing about so many government programs. They never have to fix a problem, only demonstrate good intention so politicians can save their careers. Public elementary and secondary schools, most of which remain closed thanks to teachers' unions that wish to extract even more money for themselves without returning to classrooms, are targeted to receive $129 billion. Schools don't have to reopen to get the money, despite the science which the big guy promised to rely on that, say, that says young children are less likely to become infected. The Congressional Budget Office has said that Congress previously authorized $113 billion for schools, but that most of that money has not yet been spent. There's plenty more, including massive amounts of cash for programs favored by Democrats. In addition to Planned Parenthood, included are billions to the free premiums for the Affordable Care Act, $39 billion for child care, and $30 billion for public transit agencies. The $15 an hour minimum wage, which may lead to more layoffs and even fewer hires. $1.5 billion for Amtrak. A bridge to Canada, not, related, not confused with Alaska's notorious bridge to nowhere some years ago. And as the CBO noted, $500 billion in grants to fund activities related to the arts, humanities, libraries, and museums in Native American language preservation. If not properly cooked, pork can be infected with trichinosis, a disease caused by a small parasitic worm. That seems a good analogy when it comes to the parasitic congressional worms infesting, infecting our economy with nonstop spending of money that we don't have and borrowing that can't continue without causing serious economic harm. Nations of the past have not been able to survive massive debt. What makes us think we can? Democrats say it's much needed assistance for individuals, businesses, state and local governments that needed economic stimulus. Republicans who appear to be unanimously opposed to, the, to it call it non-COVID waste and a blue state bailout. They say it's riddled with pork. Congress has proven, has provided $1.9 trillion in total assistance to state and local governments this year, most of which is in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, some lawmakers claim that the additional municipal bailouts will be necessary to address revenue pitfalls in state and local budgets. One, proposed, one proposal calls for an additional $1 trillion in federal spending. The additional bailout money is unnecessary. Lawmakers should instead have asked how the states are spending the money they've already received from the federal government. 
States have about $450 billion in liquidity to weather this crisis. That's before cutting a single cent in spending. States have become less concerned about adequate physical adequate physical planning for disasters and other emergencies because they rely on the federal government to provide most of the funding <coughs> for recovery efforts. Put simply, with additional bailout, there's little incentive for the states to make important physical reforms. The total national debt has risen about $25 trillion. With additional bailout, Congress would be choosing to take out another mortgage on the back, backs of our future generations. This isn't fair to our children and grandchildren. But in the short term, it isn't fair to the taxpayers in the states that have managed healthy rainy day funds and kept their pension systems in the black. State governments should make do a difficult but manageable task with the money Congress has already dispersed. They don't need this additional bailout. You be sure this is nothing more than a blue state wet dream boondoggle of cash that will soon be pissed away in an unsustainable programs or projects. This is going to be a supremely ugly, confusing, and stupid period in American history, which is somehow both sad and appropriate. The past year has, the past year after all, has been an exercise in demented government overreach, which has destroyed our nation's well-being under the guise of saving us. The net result being that America has been protected right into the poorhouse. Why not cap it all off with an insane spending spree of unprecedented proportion? It makes as much sense as all of the other government lunacy we see today. Add to this other ill-conceived government programs and policies that are driving up the cost of food, fuel, and housing for reasons that range from the befuddling to the absurd. And this gargantuan government bailout plan is almost understandable. Un is almost understandable. We can, sadly enough, unlike the Mongol log. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps going on and on. <laughs> the daily lives of majority of Americans will be little improved by the <clears throat> actions of the president, big guy, and his Democrat Democratic allies. And they might even be worse. However, the faithful who are blissfully oblivious to the long-term consequences of the fiscal irresponsibility, irresponsibility will sing the praise of borrowing and spending to their flocks, which is both expected and depressing. The selfish and self-interest, the selfish, the selfishness and self-interest that went into buying, building this frightening Frankenstein monster of, of obscene legislative malfeasance. That was a big tongue twister. Ooh, yeah. I know. Ooh, I talk know. about using big words. And in a combination. It's yeah. fantastic for those who are, already, are busily dreaming of new and wondrous ways to spend other people's money. But it really won't do the rest of us much good at all. But aren't we so very glad that our local, state, and federal governments now have been granted a cornucopia of cash that Ooh. we pay. Yeah, that's Corn a cornucopia. cornucopia. I use that word. Ooh. I use that word often. He's been playing Scrabble. That's a, that, 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 that's a <laughs> He's farm, been playing that's Scrabble. A, that's a farmer's uh, term. Yeah. Cornucopia. Yeah. Granted, a cornucopia of cash that will be paid for, for by you and the future generations of taxpayers. I will presume my own sarcasm here is clear to all. But I know there are many way, many who are ecstatic that a massive cash drop is now in progress. This is just one more example of the divide between reality and fantasy that now splits our nations in two. Enjoy watching your hard-earned taxpayer, taxpayer dollars spent, America. And that, my friends, is that. My name is Mongo. I drink whiskey. I smoke cigars. And I know things. Mongo is out. Candy gram for mango. Oh. Candy gram for mango. Hey, mango. Sign, please. Thank you. Mango like candy. Yes, and another wonderful mango log from the one and only Mongo. You, you know, know, and ooh. oh, ooh. <laughs> and you know what? I got to say one thing. Unlike. Our uh, Facebook checkers and our, our fact checkers, 
Mongo does his due diligence. He he puts these things together and he does whatever he can to make sure that these facts and these numbers are as true as possible. He does a lot of digging, so a lot of this, all this stuff is, it's not fabricated, not made up numbers, and not made up statistics. This is he works seven days a week putting this together and getting all the facts. And you know he fact checks his own stuff one, two, three times before he puts this together. So thank you for doing such, I mean, amazing work, Mongo. Appreciate that. You, you know he's he's like our very own Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity. Uh, Bill O'Reilly, hell yeah, uh, all, uh, Dan Bongino, uh, um, all rolled into one. Yes, you know? yes, with a cowboy hat. Yeah, with the cowboy hat on. But you know, I wanted to say something about uh, that's another, just another great monologue. <clears throat> but you know what's really irritating? I, I, you're watching all this stuff going on, and I see these scenes from the border, which it's. I don't care what they say. This is a disaster of that we never had under President Trump. But I see these camps, right, being built. And they're using military tents. They've got them set up in a neat military, uh, orderly fashion, fence around them, you know, air conditioned, the whole bit. I've been inside those tents. I've helped set them up before. So, I mean, it, it, you, don't, you wouldn't take that to go camping in the Sequoias, right? right. These, are, these are nice military-grade tents that they're setting up for these folks, all right? And that's a disaster. It's a human disaster for those people that are involved. It's a human disaster for the citizens of this country. But this is what pisses me off. What pisses you off? I know what it takes to house one veteran for any extended period of time. You almost can't do it, right? You right. can't do it because yep. you got to put them up in a hotel. There's no tent city for that veteran, that right. homeless veteran. Right. There's no place he can go. Somebody has to come out of pocket. Yet... Our government is coming out of our pocket after inviting all these people to come here and throwing the damn gate open. Yet my veteran, he can't get that. Right. I rolled up to the V Rock. Who, 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 who served our who served our country, country honorably and in combat. He can't get he shit. protected well, the citizens the of this country. Credit. They've been very careful not to allow the media or the press access to these camps to see the conditions these people are living in. Well, because uh, it can't be talked Griff about G if nobody knows about it. Yeah, Griff Jenkins got, uh, uh, or somebody did, his no, they photographer. They, got, they, they can go to the camp, but they can't get in. No, I didn't. I wasn't talking about inside. I don't know what the inside yeah. looks like. Uh, I'm guessing cots and and portable toilets. But from the outside, you've seen them. They're they're like army command tents that join up. They're huge. Right. right? But <clears throat> he can't get a freaking pup tent. Right. Okay. That pisses me off. That they're throwing they're throwing the south gate open. They're giving them, they're, they're bringing them in. They're not, in some cases, not vetting them. All right. right. Then they're trucking them to locations all around the country and saying, here you go. Welcome well, they're to also America. releasing them with COVID. And with COVID, here's our, here's our checkbook. I will write you a check on your way in the door. And it's, the American people should be in revolt over this. Okay. They should be in revolt. You, uh, I'm just, it, I'm really just going to elaborate on. on what you just said, because I just got a, a message from uh, Karen Solomon over in Blue Help, right? So I want everybody to go to the bluehelp.org. They have an interactive uh, statistics page now. Um, and, you know, when we talk about spending money on our vets, our vets are homeless. There's numerous vets around just the state of Texas alone that are living under overpasses that, that we are not housing because there is no funding, or the VA doesn't have the money to put them up, so or the VA. So if they can do it for those people, why can't they do it for our vets? Right. Why can't they do it? Right. So let, let, let me just tell you a little statistic, too. Here in 2021, right, uh, we've had, and we're not talking about line-of-duty deaths. We're talking about the mental health issues now. We had 33 officers to date take their own lives because there's no reputable mental health programs There's not a lot, a lot of money being spent on mental health that should be there's money being spent but not enough if 33 have taken their lives right 26 of those first responders were also veterans they were military veterans that served our country went into the first responder field still dealing with their mental health issues and 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 taking their own lives 26 of those 33 officers who have taken their lives were military veterans. Um, you know, the average years of service 
for these men and uh, women that are taking their own lives are 15 years that they put into giving back to their community. Uh, 81 correction officers. Uh, I mean, it, it goes on and on. So if you, if you want to check out the statistics on our first responders and our veterans that are uh, dealing with, our mental, with, with severe mental health due to serving our country and our communities and our states, go to bluehelp.org. And uh, you can you can click on the um, statistical tool and, and check it out for yourself. These numbers don't lie. Actually, they do lie a little bit because they're probably underrated. They're undervalued because a lot of places do not report. And when a homeless vet who is out on the street takes his own life, some of those aren't accounted for because he has lost touch with his family or he's lost touch, you know, with reality. <coughs> you know. But you said it right. We are taking care of people. And we're not even taking care of our own United States citizens who've served our country, who've battled for our country, who protect our citizens in each city, state, and community. But we're going to throw that south border gate open and let 3,000 people come over to oh, the— man. hundreds right, of thousands. Wait, here, and, you know, here's another thing. We're, ready, we're willing to house 3,000 illegal immigrants, right, in, in Dallas, right, for 90 days. For 90 days, we're going to bed them— Feed them and take care of them for 90 days, which, listen, I am not uh, opposed to taking care of anybody, but when I have 3,000 veterans who've served this country around the state of Texas that are living in underpasses, that are living in, in storm drains, right, why can't we, we can't, we can't find a, uh, a place to house them for a week, so let alone 90 days? When you stepped out, Mongo was going down the list of things that, uh, uh, with no Republican or independent or conservative help. This was all the Democrats rammed this piece of crap through, all right? And and the rep in my uh, district, Texas 32, Colin Allrong, I mean Colin Allred, um, he voted straight party line, voted for all this wasteful spending. Why couldn't he or some <laughs> other Democrat say, you know, wait a minute, maybe we could do something for our homeless veterans across the country this is this is not just in dallas texas or dallas county rockwall county this is all around the country you can find this but all no, around the world uh, probably yes yeah, so, well right. yeah grant and those guys over in london england have yep. have a similar problem but i when i have seen firsthand what it takes for one vet and then you multiply that times 10 times 20 times 30 times 100 times a thousand in in this area here and I'm thinking, you are throwing millions and millions. You got a, a whole trillion dollars you haven't even spent, and you're throwing it around the world to to you know gender studies in Pakistan. And who gives a fuck about that? Honestly, who cares? There's the f bomb. That was one. <laughs> I'm sorry. This pisses me off because I see a homeless vet trying to do the right thing, trying to do the right thing by his family. He walked no. all the way from freaking Alabama to Texas. Okay, this is just one story. Walked, hitchhiked, so that he could try to be a good father uh, to a small child, right? And then he gets a job in Arlington. Well, now he's got to go from Rowlett to Arlington. No job, no car, no nothing. He's got to rely on Dart. Well, Dart in Tarrant County stops running at midnight, and his um, uh, job is 8.5 8 miles away. Eight so, point, yeah, so, so he's got to go 8 miles one way, 8 miles back to get there. It's, it's an impossible thing. Government... Government's not reaching out to help this kid. Nobody, you know, but yet there's calling all wrong, dishing out the bucks over in Texas 32 going, yep, $25 billion to the Kennedy Center, $50 billion here. It, it, that, that was wrong. Millions of dollars. Right. Who's helping these guys? Nobody. That's just one, and they're not, and it's wrong. We, the, again, I say it again, the American people should be in revolt against this Democratic administration for what they're doing. It is, you use the word malfeasance or whatever. Yep, yeah, you, you said it. Word, okay? <laughs> this is malfeasance of its worst kind. Okay, this is this is he, this is he's opening the country to an invasion of people we don't know who are. We can help them by making them stay home and helping them make their own damn countries better, telling them how to do it. But we shouldn't be doing a damn thing until these veterans that are in our area, and again, I know they're all around the world. We should be helping them take care of themselves, giving them those that want that hand up that need that mental health counseling. Why aren't we paying more money? 
President Trump discredits. Say what you like. You remember with the the uh, he did that act last June, and I'm drawing a blank on the name of it. But he signed in the CARES, that Act. The CARES act, where the, uh, it was a ten point plan to deal with suicides in the military. Well, guess what? The big guy's doing. Where the Pentagon has a big budget. The VA has a big budget. Since he's been in office, complaints about the VA are up like crazy. Because guess what, people? I need the VA's help. I, I'll call the VA. Well, there's no answer. There's no one there. They're they're on hiatus. They're home. I don't know what the hell they're doing. And that's not to disparage all of them because there are many. Our good friend Little Tex works for the VA, and he's a tireless worker. He does a great job. There's many others that I'm familiar with that do a good job. But but they're understaffed. They, they're understaffed, the undertrained, now and un- has right. changed. Yes. Vets don't matter. We're concerned about you know if, uh, gender studies in Pakistan. Gender studies in Pakistan, and and uh, you know you can be a woman from here up and a man from there down. We're concerned about that. We're concerned about all these things. But well, it American does give people. you a better chance of getting a date. Say the money you're going to save on dates too. <laughs> you know, you, you bring you bring up a, a great point. You know, the, and I'm not. There is money out there. There's t- there, right so clearly, but you know how hard it is to get. You yes, know how hard it is for a veteran to secure funds. On, I mean, you even said it. The the library. This veteran that you had, right, who is trying to better minutes. himself, who who want who does not have access to a computer, yeah. tried to get into the library to take a a motor vehicle test to better himself. To better himself, the library only gave him thirty minutes. Okay, but we will give unlimited access to um, non citizens of this country. But a veteran who fought. And, and suffered for our country, we only give 30 minutes. I don't know. Why Why isn't the rest of America seeing this? Why is it so hard? Why is the bureaucratic paperwork so thick that this guy cannot get a place to to lay his head, to, to eat a good meal, to make a life for himself, to better himself when he's trying? Do you, this is the last thing I must say about this. No, it's not. Today, <laughs> today, and I'm gonna try to get off my soapbox because this really does it, it gets me. Does it tickle your ass? Way. Tickle's not the word I'd use, but you know, when this particular vet that I'm referring to right now, um, when I first met him, we gave him a backpack, and in that backpack was a, a reconditioned flag. We've talked about those before. Where you know, like a one that flies at a fire station or at the post office when they retire it. Well, normally they dispose of it in a in a in approved manner, right. but a lot of times they'll take in and uh, um, have it reconditioned, washed and cleaned, and then folded and put into plastic. Yep. Uh, our buddy Sea Dog got one from Vietnam in 1968 when he was there. They come from all over, you know, wherever American flags fly, and so at the V Rock we put one of those flags in the in the backpacks that we've got to these vets, and so he was going through it, and he found that flag. And he started to cry. And he told me the story. And we put it in there to help remind them who they are. Right. They're a veteran they of the United States. They fought States, for that. Damn straight. They're a veteran of the United States Armed Forces. They served under that flag. It has lots of meaning for them. That flag means something. President Trump got that. So he put that flag out of the backpack, pulled it out of there, and he started telling me um, why he was crying. And it was because... Uh, his father had a flag folded just like that for reasons that you can imagine, and he lost it in a fire. Okay, he lost it. And he said it, that meant so much to him to get that reminder right there. And I saw that, and I'm like, that that's it, it touched me. Then you look, you juxtapose that with what's coming across the border, people flying the flags of El Salvador and, and everywhere else that they're coming from and burning American flags and the disrespect to America, the country. This is, it's wrong. This is absolutely, it's morally wrong. I believe it probably is legally wrong, although I, I'm sure that when, you know, you got, got the dumbs in control, that's gonna, that complaint will never go anywhere right. until uh, two years from now when they get tossed out. But it's, it's, a, it's not even about politics. It's about right and wrong. It's about okay. morality. It's about morality that American veterans are living in squalor under the, the 66 bridge in Rowlett and elsewhere, uh, uh, John King Boulevard and Cesar Chavez and uh, Fair Park. It's bullcrap that they're doing that and people that 
don't speak English, don't want to speak English, don't want to assimilate, don't have any job skills, never gave one damn thing to this country, are having the red carpet rolled out for them by bumbling Biden and his, his cronies, okay, that's a crime. It's wrong. In my opinion, it's wrong. And we should be in revolt about it until they step up and change that equation. And I don't care anymore. Colin, all wrong. You are wrong, wrong, wrong for voting for these things in my district. You're my rep, so I'm calling you out. Get your ass over to Rowlett and check out these veterans for yourself. Talk to them and see the consequences of your votes. See well, it's it. politicians like him that sit behind a desk and they'll come out for a, a public, they'll come out for like a meet and greet public uh, publicity stunt and they'll, they'll shake a hand of a veteran and they'll be like, look what I'm doing. But they're, they're not boots on the ground. They are not, they're, they are behind a desk doing absolutely nothing. Uh, bowing to political pressure, not not serving uh, our veteran community, and not serving our first responder community. You even said it. He sits on the board of the Veteran Affairs, right? And he has done nothing, zero. Um, he has not. He has not even given had the courtesy of returning emails or or even visiting and being part of the Veterans Resource and Outreach Center. Over in uh in Raleigh, it's in his district. It's, it's in a his couple district. Miles from his office. And you got you guys serve more more veterans a day than he even knows. Yeah, he doesn't. You know, know he doesn't know. And this is you know you and Chris Kazar are out there every day. You know, life's message. You know, trying to better and trying to do you. You know, when we talk, you know, when we, when we talk about with just three knuckleheads trying to make a difference, right? But we're we're succeeding because we're 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 making a difference in one person's life at a time. When Colin Allred sits behind his desk and all he gives a shit about is his suit, his his paid for lunch, and and his political uh, cronies. That's they, it. He doesn't care about the guy on the street. They deployed FEMA to the border. You know, FEMA responds in natural disasters, right? So right. Uh, that pretty much sums it up right there. Even though they don't have the balls to call it a disaster yet, and again, I see. The difficulty, I've seen it firsthand, in taking care for over an extended period of time of one person. Everything that has to go into it, the money that it costs to, to have to house them. Okay? So. I, yeah, I, no, I, I I agree with you. Um, no. I, don't, I don't see a solution. I don't see anything going to be done. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, it's, this is why the motorcycle community steps up and does what they do. Okay, we look at coat drives for where you know the nine brothers uh, did the coat drives, right? It was nine brothers that did the coat drives. They and they three four hundred coats or trailer loads of coats for our homeless veterans. We have chaotic angels in the UK, and we got uh, uh, you know we have so many de- groups here that support our veterans, our first responders, because you know what? If they didn't do it. The government's not going to do it. Our government is not taking care of the people who take care of them. We we should not. <clears throat> I said all that because Mongo's the, the Mongolog was spot on. It, it, all that wasteful spending going elsewhere uh-huh. when we could, if if someone had the wherewithal to to say to take that issue by the horns and say we're going to address this and we're going to take care of it we, now. Would that eliminate homelessness? No, because some people they are they are incapable of living in a home. They they are incapable of functioning in that uh, uh, within those parameters. So we're always going to have some homeless. But people like this guy, of whom I have met many, you could change that guy's life. You know, hell, you could change our right. life just by giving us a little taste of the crap that you're sending around the world. You know, you could give a huge. Uh, I, I I can't help it. I, I, this is it. So pisses me off. I got to stop because it it, it just no, triggers you, the you, shit out of me. No, you you're right. You're, one, you're one guy to take care of one guy, and they're rolling out the car carpet for tens of thousands of them. Think about that. You know, think about the the border patrol agents that are so taxed right now, that are so overwhelmed with what's what they have to do on a daily basis. All border Patrol agents are working around the clock, um, trying to do the best that they can. So, a big shout out to our our border patrol that's out there trying to do stuff in a safe manner, in a humane manner, in a uh, politically correct manner. Um, 
but also dealing with the stress of the job has got to be it's got to be overwhelming for our, our our men and women at the border right now trying to control i mean that, that's like trying to that's like trying to control niagara niagara falls with a dixie cup you know it's just it's just it's not it's not going to happen it, it, it's you're fighting a losing battle it's like herding cats it's like, <laughs> yes <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Are we going to commercial? Do we want to, yeah, let's go to commercial. Wait, we're going to leave you with hurt. Think about hurting cats. <laughs> Not hurting, hurting cats. We'll be right back after this. Come on in and take a trip down memory lane in Garland, Texas at TLC on the Lake, located at 4881 Bass Pro Drive. Step in and enjoy are made from scratch meals. It'll make you feel like you're back in grandma's kitchen. Our friendly staff is always ready to serve you and take care of your every need. Enjoy your meal on our outside deck while overlooking the beautiful views of Lake Ray Hubbard. If you're out with the family or hosting a corporate event, Visit PLC on the lake or give us a call at 972-203-8512. Fifth Avenue Nutrition of Garland is a twist on your normal coffee or donut shop. Serving coffee, teas, shaved ice, and delicious ice cream shakes, pastries, and muffins, Fifth Avenue offers a wide variety of delicious drinking concoctions ranging from specialty coffee, nitro brews, meal replacement ice cream shakes, to energy boosting fruit flavored teas. At Fifth Avenue, we proudly serve the Black Rifle Company brand coffee. At Fifth Avenue, we back our blue by offering free coffee to all uniform members of the service. Visit us at 414 West Avenue D, Garland, Texas, open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Pop in and see us. We have a bright idea to make you healthy delicious and fun. Hey, this is Troy Napoleon Brown, host of Thy Kingdom Come, broadcasting live each week on Saturday, 3 to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time from FBRN Studios at Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. Log on to hear traditional gospel music and a word from the Lord. So be sure to log on each week, Saturday at 3 to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time to catch on to Thy Kingdom Come on FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Fishbowl Radio Network presents the first ever Fishbowl 24-hour Digithon right here on FBRN.us. Starting at 12 a.m. on Sunday, March 28th, FBRN.us hosts will be broadcasting for 24 hours straight to help raise money for Fishbowl, as well as bring awareness and exposure to small businesses that have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Small businesses have struggled throughout COVID-19. And Fishbowl wants to help you and your business by giving you free exposure on FBRN.us, which reaches millions around the globe. Want a part of the action? If you own a small business, come visit the studio or call in on March 28th from anywhere in the world to 817-633-4880. And you can be a part of the FBRN Digithon, where you can enter drawings and enjoy some food with the Fishbowl family. Be sure to log on on Sunday, March 28th for our 24-hour Digithon on fbrn.us jump in hello i'm bill i've been in the financial industry for over 30 years now i share my passion for helping others become more financially educated why are so many people interested in what i share because like others i've discovered who the financially free are and who they are not but most importantly i've determined how ordinary people can become financially free if you're struggling with living paycheck to paycheck drowning in debt while struggling to save for retirement then i can get you to support your need by joining the must see financial literacy series membership you will get access to my financial courses hey don't worry i'm not going to teach you how to become a financial consultant but i am going to show you how to get out of debt how to raise your credit score and how to put savings away for retirement my courses are simple and easy to follow at your own pace so join today at a better way to grow.org that's a better way to grow.org i'm going to show you a better way to grow Come on in. All right. Welcome back to the 99% Radio Network here in the Fishbowl, broadcasting live from Fishbowl Radio Network Studios here in Globe Life Park, the heart of the entertainment district here in Arlington, Texas, man. We've had a great show 
so far. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Give us a shout, 214-556-6239. That's 214-556-6239. You want to discuss our talk with Paul, the upcoming uh, Roadhouse Museum. You want to talk about the Mongologue. You want to talk about cigars, man. Anything you want to give us a little feedback on what this show has brought to you so far. Uh, Or even you want to discuss uh, 12's rant, um, which is uh, something we can always... um, Grab topic on. Yeah, don't don't make me leave the studio and serendipitously call the studio back on my line to talk about the show. <laughs> Hello. Big words, big words. Hello, ninety nine percent. This well. is this is. Uh, do you remember what your code name? Mangi. Was? This is Mangi. Mangi. <laughs> <clears throat> this is Mangi. He's the knockoff from Mongo. <laughs> Uh, but that the number again is 214-556-6239. Let's get into uh, what's coming up in October. You know, we we talked about the uh, the grand opening of possible um, grand opening in June for uh, the OCC Roadhouse Museum in um, Clearwater, Florida. But then r- sailing out of Florida just a few months later in October is going to be the Biker Rally High Seas Cruise, yeah, man, high seas and rally. High Seas Rally, which has been going on for since, what, two, 2002, 2002 um, has really grown to be uh, such an amazing voyage uh, with over 3,000 people joining in. And the the entertainment the that's on board is by far the best that you'll ever see on any cruise line. You're not getting this, um, you know, bad lounge singer out there just, you know, playing a piano bar. You have some top quality performers. You have bike builders. You have first responder pirate parties. There is so much going on in this cruise that you, I mean, it's it's a seven-day cruise that you're going to need seven days to just relax after the cruise because you are so much uh, an internet radio program but you're getting better too there's good (laughs) stuff also yes (laughs) (laughs) you know uh when we talked with us with um some of the staff of the high seas cruise a couple of weeks back you know when they talked about uh there there's so much going on in this ship you are not gonna you're gonna be upset that you're not gonna be able to uh, do it all, you know, because every minute of the ship, every every minute of the day, there's something great going on. Between, besides going to all these ports, besides jumping on, uh, you know, the different excursions, the jet skiing, the rock walling, all rock climbing, all that stuff, um, it's just going to be a packed seven days that you're not, it's just going to be overwhelming. It is, and you can... Find out all this information that Sideshow just referred to at www.highseasrally.com. Um, in addition to, you know, all the activities, you know, the bands, uh, uh, Trace Adkins, Headliner, Molly Hatchet, Fog Hat, um, uh, Black Smoke Sinners, Xavier Muriel's band uh, from Providence Cycle Works. Uh, we had him on the show a few weeks ago. Yep. Uh, he built the custom bike that's going to be given away. Going to be a couple other custom bike builders uh, there on that cruise. Custom fabricator well. is going to be doing it on the ship. On the ship. On the ship. Yep. Just found out uh, last night that a new uh, another band. They're not new, uh, but they are great. I I actually. Oh, yep. Hey Mongo. We just. Ma- we, where, Ma- where's Mongo's phone? <laughs> hey, welcome to the ninety nine percent radio network. You're alive and on the air. Hey, man, it's Gimp from Brothers in Blue MC. How are you guys? Hey, what's going on, what's brother? What's going on, Gimp? How's New Jersey? Uh, no. Yeah, uh, it's, it's cold as hell here, man. Cold as hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, calling in if we could talk a little bit about that Wings of Hope program. You guys got uh, a few minutes for that, the ones we're doing for helping the homeless? Yes, without a doubt. Hit it. Okay. Let us know about it. Uh, did we have the flyer on us? Um, I'm... I believe that I do, and I probably posted it, but I didn't do it today, so oh, I'd have okay. to go back and find it. Right. Gimp, tell us about it. Well, first of all, thank you guys for your help with the advertising with that. And, yes, it, it has been posted, and we appreciate the, the repost on some of those as well. Uh, our Wings of Hope program, we actually partnered with the Chrome Angels Riding Club. They're the largest female riding club in the world. Um, we 
they had an idea of uh, creating care packages to go out and deliver to the homeless. So they, they contacted our club and our Jersey chapter jumped on board. And uh, I'll tell you what, this thing is absolutely amazing. And uh, it's sad in the same sense because I did not realize how bad the homelessness was in this country. Uh, I mean, going behind finding these encampments, I mean, it really puts things into perspective on what we have. And, uh, you know, we think that we're having a bad day, you know, can't imagine, you know, these, uh, these people that are living out in the woods, you know, sleeping in 20 degree weather in the snow. Right. So uh, we, uh, you know, we, we created these care packages that uh, have uh, clothing items in there, has food, hand sanitizer. There's also masks in there and uh, gloves, uh, all kinds of essentials, feminine products and things like that, because that was something that I, I didn't even realize either how large the population was of females living you know, uh, that were homeless. You know, you hit a great point on that. You know, we always focus on homeless as being male dom- a male-dominated uh, type of thing. But, yes, there are a lot of females out there that are homeless with children, with children. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look, you look at a lot of, and they're not there by choice. A lot of them are, are uh, abused by their, their significant spouses, um, ha- uh, are battling addiction or whatever it is. They still need our help. So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it's 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 absolute. I mean, it's 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 awesome to be able to give out to the community, and we are so appreciative of the Chrome Angels Riding Club for asking us to get involved. It was their Jersey Devil chapter that uh, that initiated this program, but several of their chapters throughout New Jersey have jumped on board, and we've had uh, we we probably have about twenty care packages right now that are left over, uh, but uh, the the response from the community and the people even from the clubs that have been donating has been absolutely phenomenal and we truly truly appreciate that and uh we appreciate you guys helping us get the word out with this because i mean once we got out there and saw the way some of these uh people are living and some of these people are veterans you know and it's sad to see that these these men and women that have served our country living in conditions like this i mean it's absolutely heartbreaking it's absolutely heartbreaking you would think in the united states that things like this wouldn't happen and it's it's absolutely sad you know you just you just really um kind of solidified what we were talking about you really put a um put more power a more powerful message to it because we were talking about the homeless issue right here in just dallas you know and um when people think about homeless they they not in my backyard or doesn't happen by me here we were just talking about it in dallas and now you you're talking about it you know on the east coast in jersey and then you know someone else is going to talk about it in california and you know what the people when we look at a homeless uh person who is living in a tent on a street or or begging for food on the side at the stoplight you know we kind of just a lot of people just brush them off we we as human beings have to take care of our human Mm -hmm. beings Right. I mean, Mm -hmm. we're all, you know, we are all two paychecks away from being in the same position as that person Mm -hmm. out in the street. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, your house is not promised. Your 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 shelter is not promised by no means. Um, Your job is not promised by no means. And none of us really have a bank account that's got a six figure, uh, you know, interest based uh, money making threshold that we can uh, live off for the rest of our lives so we struggle each day and these people that are out in the street are struggling so to you know they're not all drug addicts they're not all criminals and even if they are you know what they they do need to eat they do need to drink they need do need shelter and they do need to stay warm we cannot you wouldn't leave uh, a wet dog freezing in freezing temperatures you know, we can't do this to our humans. We can't do this to our, our people, and especially our vets and our first responders who have lost everything uh, out on the streets. You know, I, yeah, I, it, I, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm sorry, I wouldn't expect you to answer right now, but maybe you can call us sometime. If you were to talk to several several of these people and not get a specific story, but maybe a common theme as to how these folks ended up where they are and what they see that they need to get back on their feet to get going again, as opposed to this is just my lot in life, to give us a better perspective of these people, as opposed to people just thinking, you know what, this person's just lazy. 
I, I don't want to participate. I don't want to help because this guy's lazy. Now, this person's probably got, there's probably a common theme that a lot of them are having that this is where I'm at. This is what I need. This is where I want to be. You know, I, what, once you put a face, sometimes sometimes showing the face, putting a face to the the homeless issue kind of hits people even more, showing the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? When you when people hear homeless, they're like, oh, well, I don't see it. It's not around my neighborhood, so it doesn't affect me. But when they see it up close and personal, maybe that's what we we need to do is show show the veterans living on the streets, show the people who, who served our country how the, the squalor that they're living in and a day-to-day struggle that they have to uh, deal with just to make ends meet. Do, do you know I, the I, answer to that, Gimp? You know, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I don't, but I will find that out, and I will give you guys a call next week because we're going to be delivering care packages care packages this week as well. But I, I can tell you guys, it's it, it's really truly like a punch in the gut because when you when we go out there and you know we're listening to these people tell their stories and and this one lady that we my, we were riding along behind a nursing home and uh, my wife who's with the Chrome Angels she was uh, spotting out the window and you know we found three tents just just behind a nursing home wow. and uh, we we've, we've been dropping some food and stuff off our, our clubs in front of the in front of the tents because in some of these were we kind of believe that they see us coming and they run because you know as well as I do being cops that you know they are targets for abuse and assault and things mm-hmm. like that and especially the women that are out there so you know when we were out there dr- dropping some of this stuff off I, you know i was explaining to my wife you know they may be out there actually watch us right now they're just afraid because they don't know who we are and what our intentions are right. and um this lady that we came across yesterday uh we were you know we went out there to go visit her and she was obviously sick and uh you know we were talking to her and her and her boyfriend were inside the tent and uh, you know, we were talking with her a little bit, and she was telling us we were asking her, you know, if her tent was holding up very well because we had a spare one that we could give her. And uh, the the punch in the gut came when she was like, "Yeah, it it it, it served us very well all winter long." Oh and then it God. just hit me. Not even three weeks ago, we had sub, you know, it was uh, sub degree temperatures that you know we had snow, and it was down, you know, in like almost to uh, five six degrees. So, and to think that these people were living out in the woods in this uh, weather, I mean, like I said, it really puts things into perspective when we think that we're having a bad day and we're thinking that things are going, you know, horrible in our lives. You know, we still have a place to live. We still have heat. We still have air conditioning and we still have food in our bellies. And these these people, you know, when we were given just, you know, simple items like T-shirts and sweatshirts, the, the, the way their faces lit up and how appreciative... They were, and you can just see, you know, uh, on their faces, you know, the hard lives that they have lived. And I think that is an absolutely outstanding idea. When we go out there this week, I will make sure that I uh, try to get some testimonies from from these people and maybe uh, something they might want to add into that. And I will be happy to give a call next week because we do appreciate your help and everything the 99% Network does with getting uh, these programs out there so other people can hear what they are and to help out because, you know, even even people say, listen, I don't have a lot of money, but I'm willing to do any one. One can of food. One can of food to you might not be a big deal, but to them it might be the difference with them starving to death and living. Right. So yeah. you know we, we we do we truly appreciate. It. I saw you guys uh, you know reposted that uh, the other day on, on the ninety nine percent network about you know us going out there doing the deliveries, but it, it truly is heartbreaking. I mean, it feels good to help these people, but it truly is heartbreaking to see this. And again. I never realized how widespread and how huge of a problem this is. And, and, and even worse, to see veterans living like this after what they have done for us and our country to make my children free, and they're living on the streets like animals. This, this is unacceptable, absolutely unacceptable. And it's a shame to see that, uh, that this is allowed to happen. It truly is. You know, uh, and you see, you're seeing it firsthand first-hand experience you're out on the street you see it and and you're experiencing it now how could we on the east coast you know you're putting all these care packages together i'm sure you know supplies are in demand right now how can how can we get people on the east coast to help you know with those care packages put them together donate food donate clothing to you so you can get those out to the proper uh 
get those out to people? If, if they are in the South Jersey area or the Philadelphia area, they can contact me at 856 362 0739, or they could contact my wife, who is the president of the Jersey Devil chapter of uh, the Chrome Angels at 856 362 1010. But I'm going to say this, guys. Even if you're not in this area, I encourage you know the guys out there in the 99% world, please get involved in this. Please do something in your own communities because, again, my eyes were like they were completely shut to this problem. Even when I was a cop, I knew some people lived on the streets, but until we started walking through the woods when we were getting tips where some of these encampments were, I mean, it, it was like I, I, was, I can't even believe that I did not realize that this problem was so huge. Hey. Like, I, I thought, you know, we would see a couple of people on the street, you know, we would help them out as we can, but to go out into these encampments where they, you've got, you know, several people living, and then you, these, these, you know, in part of these woods where we're finding three, four, five tents out there in just one area, I mean, we, we've got to do something, and I would encourage anybody in, in, uh, in the 99% community, please get involved, please help out. It doesn't take much to do these clothing and food drives, and, you know, a little bit of that time could, tr- and I'm trying to be dramatic, but that time truly could save someone's life. Yes. It really can. You're 100% right, it could. You know, your, your experience there, Gimp, is very similar to, to what my experience is here in the DFW or or in Dallas County are very, very similar. And it's also clear to me that this is another uh, another example of the 99% law-abiding motorcycle world stepping up to address a problem that it, it, it is everyone's problem. I mean, right. for, at least in, in terms of, in my mind, for veterans, the American public should be uh, uh, all unified in addressing that problem. They should they should want to take care of it. But it's also abundantly clear to me now under the current administration that that's not happening. And look what's happening in in South New Jersey, brothers in blue stepping up. Uh, and and uh, I'm drawing a I'm having a brain fart. The the ladies group that Gimp referenced, the, Chrome. the, the Chrome, Chrome Angels, Angels RC, Chrome yeah. Angels. Um, you know, are stepping up just like everywhere. And we can go around the country, probably right. every damn state, and and see where like-minded folks, a lot of them from the the, you know, the uh, uh, the nine percent right. network, are stepping up to address these things. At and, and it, it comes at a cost. It's a, it costs money, a lot of money to do this. It's right. not a simple thing to put together. I don't know what what uh, Gimp and them. Uh, put into their care package or, or how much goes into it. Even though you shop, you try to find, you know, even, you if, you, even store, if you get items at a dollar store, it's still exactly, going to cost, cost you $20, money. $30 uh, but uh, the care package. It's so overwhelming. So hats off to you, Gimp, and the Brothers but, in Blue and all know, of them back there. I want to ask you one other question, Gimp. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, when you talk about a homeless problem throughout our nation, right? Mm-hmm. Are you deal? What, how are your politicians addressing this issue? Because I know our politicians out here are not addressing the issue at all because it doesn't affect them. So we have a politician problem that's not a, addressing this issue. Is is South Jersey or anybody in Jersey even caring about these people out on the streets? I, I have not heard a thing, no. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, of what I can see here, uh, it, it seems like people are asleep at the wheel. Because, yeah. uh, like I said, I, I, I completely, when, when, we, when my wife approached me about this, that, they, uh, that the Chrome Angels RC wanted to you know, get us involved in it, and we were like, okay, great. I was thinking that we were going to go out through our county, maybe find a handful of people, and that was going to be it. And then when we were going to one encampment, and there was two there, there was so many here, so many there, it just, I, I couldn't believe it. And this was just in one city. This wasn't even in our entire account. This was one city. Wow. So, uh, you know, and we, we've got tips on other homeless encampments. So I would say as far as what I've, I've heard is nothing. Nothing's being done. Nothing's being done to help these people. And, and it is absolutely terrible. And if I could say real quick again, I truly appreciate the Chrome Angels RC Jersey Devil chapter asking us to get involved in this because this is something that we have picked up that this is going to be a year-round program for us. We probably have about thirty dollars worth of items per care package, and th- th- these are brand new socks, you know, uh, you know, winter hats, uh, you know, undershirts, you know, uh, uh, undergarments and stuff like that. And again, we had female products, which I didn't think we were going to be able to get rid of those a lot, and we we've used them the most because I, I can't yeah. believe how many females are actually out there. And uh, so, you know, 
there's a lot of items that go in here, and there's been a lot of, you know, a, a huge donation drive in our area. We've had money that was donated, you know, that we, that we helped with that from, from Art Club to buy supplies. You know, just just basic things, you know, that 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 makes us human, you know, that we need, you know, you know, toilet paper, you know, just, uh, soap, you know, things to, you know, to keep disease away. It's, right. it's just crazy to see the way these people are living and, do, and there doesn't really truly seem to be any help. And bringing that up about the politicians, you've just, you know, given me a, a great idea with that. I'm going to start contacting my own politicians in this area. I'm going to ask the Chrome Angels to do the same thing. If they would uh, jump on board with us with this, with trying to do some kind of political drive to help these out, uh, the, these people that truly need it. Because you, you absolutely hit the nail on the head when you said we would never leave a, a, a dog that was wet and cold outside. We would bring them in and take care of that. Why are we letting these people on the street live in conditions like this? And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you the ones that we've met. Now, granted, I haven't been around them long, but being a cop, you can usually, you know, you can usually pick out, uh, you know, people that are on drugs or that are drug addicts. And, and I'll tell you, I've only seen a few of them. The rest of them, it just seems like you can see, you know, they've they've had, a, you know, a terrible time in their life. And, you know, I don't know their stories, but I'm going to, you know, try to find out some of those to give some testimony next week when I call back. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just it's just absolutely sad. You know, being a father with, with girls, seeing ladies on the street terrifies me. That yeah. terrifies me. And, and I can't imagine the fear that these ladies live in of being assaulted oh, yeah. out there in the woods and stuff like that. And that's why I kind of think some of those camps that we went to, we, we believe that they ran off because they didn't know who we were. Well, that's why you know? a, lot of them, a, lot, a lot of them will not go into the shelters. When me and Tigger were feeding the homeless down here in Dallas, down off Lancaster Avenue, we were wondering why they weren't going into the uh, shelters. Now, the shelters mm-hmm. are more dangerous than the streets, mm-hmm. you know? And then you think about... You know, when, we, when you see a homeless person with a shopping cart or a bag and stuff like that, and you're like, well, go into the shelters. They don't want to, that's, everything they own is in that shopping cart. They can't leave it outside. They're not allowed to bring it into the shelter. And if they leave it outside, it's going to be stolen. It's like leaving your windows yeah. open. So they'd rather sleep in an underpass. They'd rather sleep in in a, um encampment in the woods because they are segregated and they were they feel a little safer because there's really no protection in these shelters, especially for women. The 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 sexual assault and the, the not only that and uh, the 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 theft that goes on and is mm-hmm. and is perpetrated against women that are homeless is huge. Those numbers is, those numbers are probably off the charts that we don't even aren't even able to register. Yeah, the, the, these people are human beings, and they should be treated as human beings with the dignity and respect. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like I said, we are going to get on that with the politicians and making some phone calls because the, I have not seen anything, anything done in this area to help them out. I haven't heard about anything. And we contacted some of the local police departments to try to get some tips on where some of these encampments were. It, it, just, it was absolutely shocking to see how many. It, well, it really was. It was absolutely shocking. Well, uh, why don't we, you know, if next week's okay, why don't we have you and your wife on a show? We can, and we'll, we'll, uh, you guys can Skype in. We'll hear some of the stories uh, from this week that and what you need, and we'll really help promote it. Uh, we'll go another step further and help uh, the, you, you know, get you going with this. Once you guys come on next week, twelve, we'll get in touch with you. We'll, we'll set up a good time for you and your wife, and uh, we'll see how we here in Dallas can also help. Uh, Maybe put some care packages together and send them your way as well. I, I truly appreciate that, guys. I definitely do that. Looking forward to that. And, again, I thank you guys and the 99% Network for thank getting the, the word about, about things like this. And to see homeless veterans with dog tags around their necks and living in a tent, is it's unacceptable, guys. And we have to do something to fix this. Totally and I yeah. appreciate it. And I would definitely reach out to you guys next or I'll, I'll speak to 12 later this week. And looking forward to, to talking to you guys next week on the show. Thank you, Perfect. guys. Thank Take you. Care, Kemp. Take care, yeah. brother. Take these guys. Bye. Man, it's heartbreaking. It's hot, you know, and it, these are just two stories. Yeah. That you know, you you hit on a topic, and these are just two stories that boom. Can you imagine all the untold stories that are out there? That you know, man, our phone would be blowing off the hook if they, you know, we were talking about uh, homeless and how how people could help. So, man, thank God for those guys and and uh, the Chrome Angels, uh, Devil's Chapter out of Jersey for uh, stepping up and doing what they're doing. And we'll see what we can do here in Dallas to 
you know, give them some aid. Yep. You know? Certainly help them promote it, if nothing yes. else. Yes, yeah, without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. So we were talking, to, just to, to close up on the, the high seas rally, um, it's going to be October. Uh, if you're part of the 99%, Check this cruise out. There's still openings. Again, www.icsrally.com. The entertainment is off the hook. The the there's the casino. There's uh, smoking. Uh, there's drinking. There's uh, once again we're promoting all is the good fart? happens. Is there farting? <laughs> if you want. <laughs> well, for you that's just a given. I you know, have to ask we're, that we're gonna have to stop putting a disclaimer out. You know, you know. Do not try this at home. The bad habits yeah. uh, <laughs> generated hey, hey, we've, here. We've earned those bad habits, buddy. Each you know, of us. You bring up the entertainment that's on. The, that's going to be on that cruise, and uh, I know you want you 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 jumping in your seat like I, uh, I got it under control. Yeah, I got it. We'll yeah, do it next yeah, week. No, no, you can do it now. No, no, you can we'll, do it we now. Can break it. You, you want to do it now? You, I, I, I know you want to. You'll, you'll have a bad week if you don't. Come on. So <laughs> you just got the email. Pull down your it's pants not, and show the We got no confirmed you got dates butt. yet. But, <laughs> But go ahead. All right. Break so, that news. So um, the 99% Network is going to be honored to uh, interview uh, on air Molly Hatchet coming up. And uh, a great cover band. Uh, I, I urge you, if you like, uh, you know, all kinds of musical genres, but you like to hear it from different people sometimes. And you like to try, you know, like lesser known bands and whatnot. Check out Steel Rod. That's the name of the band. I listened to them last night, and they're fantastic. Um, they have just been added to the cruise. These guys can rock, and I am wow. really looking forward to uh, uh, seeing them play on the boat. And, uh, you know, that's that's one of my – I love listening to music yeah. relaxing, and, yep. and uh, uh, they can play – they have a, an 800-song repertoire. Wow. 800. Wow. And I listened to two hours of one con- – and they play – like two hours. Don't don't ever do the air guitar with your hands again. <laughs> Did I? Twice. Oh, damn. Sorry. Is this better? Much. Because <laughs> I feel like such a nerd when you do that. <laughs> Molly Hatchet? Molly Hatchet, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah they've yeah. been around a long time, but they can yep. still rock. We're oh, gonna, hell yeah. We're going to play, uh, we'll play part cuts off their brand new album. Yep. They just got, they got a new yep. album. So we're pretty happy to, um, um, to announce that. So it's, you know, it's just, a, it's part of the continuing evolution of the evolution. 99% Radio Network. Another, another you know, word. We're, we're growing. <laughs> you're growing. You're growing. Oh, that, just yeah. Hey, welcome to the 99% Radio Network. You are on the air. What's up, my brothers? Uh, what's up, brother? Hey, Proctor. Who is this? Proctor. Hey, Proctor. What's going on, man? You got about four minutes before we got to wrap it up. All right. Sounds good. Well, I, I had to jump in, not to not to ruin the, the, the segment you were in, but in the reference to the uh, the homeless issue, the gentleman from New Jersey was hitting right on target. Yeah. Um, any, anybody wants to go to Dallas or Fort Worth, I used to work. Uh, in and around all the areas. I used to be a case manager with an organization, and uh, I went into every one of the homeless shelters. I, I've worked the, the streets down in downtown Dallas and Fort Worth. Um, anybody wants to go down there, uh, it'll blow your mind. I'll tell you what, when you when you go home that night, you'll be forever grateful. Um, if you're not, you, you ain't got a heart. That's right. Um, I mean, because that you're uh, able to go, yeah, go yeah. get pour a glass of water, you know, without having, exactly. you know, begging for it so i mean the things we take for granted these guys out on the street uh have to fight tooth and nail for well here's the thing there's so many people out here we're, we're swimming in, in in assets and uh all, all i had to do is go to it's a free website called nextdoor.com um if you don't have an account you can set one up and uh you can just literally ask your people in your neighborhood hey does anybody have any uh, you know, clothes that they want to donate or hats or gloves or whatever. And uh, I've loaded trucks and trucks and trucks, truckloads of stuff and taken it down there and given it away. It'll blow your mind. That You know what? That's a great idea. The Nextdoor app, uh, most people are familiar with it. That's a great idea. This way people aren't traveling from all over the place. It's right in your neighborhood. All your neighbors are around you. So, that yeah, that great, great, uh, you know, 
um, asset right there. Thanks for bringing that up. Didn't even think about yeah, no problem. Uh, nextdoor.com. Yeah, I'll, I'll put my boots on the ground and go down there with anybody that wants to go. And I can take you into some areas that are gritty. I mean, really gritty. Um, if you want to, you want to look at at the the, the underbelly, and, and there's people down there that used to be corporate executives. You, the, their stories will blow your mind. Yeah, it's well. So, anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump off here. Thanks, brother. Time, Thank but, you uh, so much for uh, sharing that, and um, and the next door app. We're gonna bring that up. Uh, but once again, we are running out of time. So thank you, brother, for uh, sharing. And we're not going to be giving any uh, homeless tours anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, I'm checking. All right, brother. Let's go. All right, bro. All right. Take care. All right, take care. All right, All right man. Uh, before we wrap it up, 12, you got anything uh, you got to say? No, you're all done? I'm done. You're sure? I'm positive. 100%? I'm 100%. All right. Mongo, once again, great Mongo log. You got anything to wrap up with? Nope, I'm good. Have a good uh, Have a good week, and I will be yep. back next week with you two and to you. All right. And uh, once again, happy St. Patty's Day to everybody. Stay safe. Stay blessed. And if you, can be, if, you can, if you can be anything in this world, please be kind. And remember, today is not the day to give up. Till next week, this is 99% Radio Network with Sideshow, 12, Mongo, and Duke. Uh, we are out.